uh blue 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 waffle blue biscuit blue um uh, what was it? it's he's got blue in the name blue sonic no hold on uh um, bluey bluey oh i like bluey good call yeah. uh no uh God, what, uh introduce yourself i forgot your last name hello and good morning this is blue screen blue screen well that's a stupid name blue waffles way better <laughs> Well, Just a good name is no one responds in real life. That's or not even a name. That that's that's just, just a up. statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, one, it's all one yeah. and the same. Yeah, well, I mean, there was one exception, but that was like 2,023 years ago, give or take. So that mm-hmm. dude respond mm-hmm. apparently. But no one else since then yep. that I'm aware of. That you're aware of. <laughs> it's what I said. <laughs> Welcome to Two Titans and a Hunter. A Destiny 2 podcast, dedicated in bringing you all the latest information, news, and opinions. This is the best show for new and veteran guardians alike, where we share tips, tricks, and tools to help you succeed and enjoy playing even more. So with all that said, let me hand you over to your hosts, the Triumph Hunting Titan Night Demon, the pink panted pansy, Perotti, and your hunter master agent, Mr. No One Responds in Real Life. Oh man, so how y'all doing today? It's been it's been a while. Uh, Destiny for me is unplayable. At least I was just telling them that I've tried to uh, play the last couple of days, and I'm getting a whopping eight frames per second. Yeah. Well, that, I sounds like a, I am, that sounds like a you I am, hardware I have problem. I've gone from one forty four to eight, and I, 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 can't, how is that I can't do des- it. How is that Destiny's problem? That sounds like a your hardware problem. No, sir, it is not. It absolutely is not my hardware. I've tried uninstalling so, and reinstalling. So I've have tried. A, so is it a bandwidth um, problem? Because I, I, I'm honestly a little confused. So you yeah. can play other things at high frame rate, just not yeah. Destiny? Mm-hmm. Are you sure you're not hooked into a VPN to, like, Botswana or something? I'm positive. The game I'm playing right now, uh, this one right here, I'm I'm at 60 frames uh, on average, right? And this is a high intensity intensity game right here. Doesn't look like it, but there's a lot of crap going on, a lot of particle effects, right? So if I exit out here, more particle effects than the fire in Destiny. Yes, I haven't heard of anybody else having reduced frame rates. Yeah, I mean, I mean, mean, this this honestly is a recurring respawn issue where he will have horrendous problems with the game. Uh, no, granted, and the game has had its, its share of issues, but it's usually the you just can't get on to the game. Not once you're on, it just runs at you know NES speeds. Well, that was yeah. really news, right? They when they had the DDoS going on, was there? Did somebody there get assassinated, DDoSes. or like, is there an explanation still? Still confusing to me. No, no but, uh, like, like, like even even when they said like, hey, you know, we we normally don't you know report the DDoS because we, you know, partially because we don't want to give whoever's DDoSing us the, you know, publicity or credit or whatever. So, I mean, I think the fact that they even mentioned it is sort of newsworthy that they were like, hey, this Mm -hmm. is going on right now. It's, you know, our servers aren't just crap. We're also being attacked by, you know, whoever could be any, you know, any number of any number of people, things, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I mean, I, I haven't been on much in the last two weeks, but I was on last night for two hours and this morning for about two hours. And knock on wood, like everything worked fine. No error codes, no getting booted to orbit. Like it all seemed fine. I did. I do see Destiny or Bungie Help said, you know, about 13 hours ago, as we record this, so like Friday evening US time, you know, issues issues with persistent error codes in Destiny 2 have subsided. If you're still seeing issues, blah, blah, blah. So there were a bunch of, you know, I guess in the last couple of, last four days since the 26th of this month. So the last, you know, 26th to the 30th. You know, we're having, you know, ongoing error codes in Destiny 2. More information will be provided. So they finally got to the bottom of whatever that was. Maybe mm-hmm. DDoS related, maybe not. You know, who knows? It was real PTSD for me. I I had moved and I went from super fat fiber optic connection back to a cable modem, which is just the best I can do here. Oh, my condolences. And, it, and, it, and the time, thank you. And the timing... Uh, kind of matched up with these attacks. And I was remembering oh. the errors from the past, thinking it was in fact my hardware. But it's all better now. I'm I'm playing at Xbox frame rates, whatever those are. Yeah, 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 so I think respawn just needs to get an Xbox problem solved. 
Done. Um, oh, I found my. I found. I thought I sold them, but they were actually in my closet, buried under a bunch of stuff. I still have two. Well, there you go. That's that's where the frames are. They're, they've been in the closet the whole time, under uh, piles of clothing and discarded boxes and secrets. Yeah, like, you guys should have a contest so I can give away my old Xbox. That'd be great. Get ooh. it out of my closet. Well, there's there's going to be some some sort of event coming up in some number of weeks <laughs> that's going to involve some sort of trivia something. That's about as much as I can tell you from what I understood. So my th- yeah, my we, favorite part we'll is the curated punishment. The curated punishment is my favorite part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just glad that uh, he doesn't know who I am and has no idea how to punish me. So I win. Small batch bespoke punishments. <laughs> bespoke punishments. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I'd say more information to come on that, but really, th- there's no way to know. So we'll see what happens with that. No, guys, it's going to be great. Y'all have to guess a number, and that number has to see if it's response number. And we're also going to have a game show, and that game show is going to be like Jeopardy, but it's not really Jeopardy, but it's kind of Jeopardy. And it's just like, all right, dude, write it on paper, give us a coherent explanation, and then we'll spread it to everybody. I feel like I'm just in Jeopardy, just sort mm. of perpetually. Squirrel! I haven't seen it in a while, but I heard the girl from The Big Bang Theory is the new host. Did you guys ever see National Lampoon's uh, Vegas Vacation, where they go to the alternate casino? <laughs> alternate casino? Yes, but yeah. it's been a long time. Yeah, well, it's um, exactly what you're saying, responding. One of the tables is guess a number. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you put your money on the table, it's like, nope, it was 30. <laughs> so, and there's, there's no physical card. Usually, usually a small just, child like, is involved. Out of his brain kind of thing. Right. Okay, yeah. Sorry, uh, you, you saying Perotti? Well, I was just saying, I think I've played that casino game, but it's usually a small child is involved, and I'm pretty sure the number changes as I'm guessing, mm. which is probably <laughs> about the same as a casino, if I'm being honest. Like like uh, from, uh, what was it, Bruce Almighty? How many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> Nine. Nah, ha And he's got like two extra fingers on the edge of his head. <laughs> 326 was your answer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, since 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 Dad's not here to keep to keep this car on the road, and we're, we're already swerving mm-hmm. swerving side to side as everyone expected would happen, and and let's be honest, he knew it would happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I suppose we should tell the people. Well, since since Respawn has not been able to play Destiny all week, he, his his opinions are going to be absolutely the hottest of takes and the choicest of cuts. Mm-hmm. So that'll be good fun. So I wonder. Let's see. So so earlier again, the the same day that all these you know connectivity problems started. They did push out an update, 7205. Yeah, we're going straight to updates first and see if maybe maybe any of these things could explain why Respawn's frames have all left him. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not an Iron Banner one. The players now have a chance to earn Iron Banner engrams at the end of every Iron Banner match. Wins have a higher drop chance. So more engrams. You can put in your little engram pouch and hold on to them. I'm pretty sure it's not the slightly tuned spawning zones for burnout and trials. That, that doesn't seem frame related. Uh, the Vermilion Defender Emblem can now be acquired from collections. No, that, that doesn't seem like it. Oh, oh maybe it's the f- they fixed several out-of-bounds spots in the multiplex map. And an issue in disjunction was. where that's players could spawn was. under the map. Maybe that's the issue. You, maybe you're just spawning under the disjunction map, and that was the whole problem. I think so. I spawned just, in the you, core of Saturn, so that took all my frames. Yeah, you, you fell over, burned down, and sank into the swamp. That's, mm-hmm. That explains it. Uh, I know. I know a change that people have been talking about for Crota's End. The loot pool has been modified to have a more balanced distribution of armor pieces. So this change only affects the armor. So your weapon drops remain as before. So whatever weapon table you're looking at, still the same, still good. So there is a new loot pool for encounter, you know, per encounter for armor. For the Abyss encounter, the first one, it'll drop helmet, gauntlets, and chest armor. The Oversoul Throne Bridge are going to drop. Gauntlets, chest armor, and leg armor. Here, Ute is going to drop you chest armor, leg armor, and the class item. And Crota, son of Oryx, leg armor, class item, and helmet. So if you've, if you've been running this, you know, I don't know what the drops were before, but if you were getting things you didn't want, now, it, it, it's nice to see the class item is further back, so you're not just mm-hmm. going to get that every single time like you you clear the first encounter, which always seems to be my, albeit limited, experience. 
Uh, the Eidolon's ally can now be reacquired from collections with the correct purchase requirement. So if you delete it, now you can get it back. And the Spoils of Conquest Triumph only requires the players to find two hidden chests. Two hidden chests because uh, there was never a third chest to find. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've been hunting the third chest, uh, n- no, you, you were never going to find it. No, you weren't. It's probably over in Vault of Glass somewhere. Uh, your heist battleground Mars, they reduce the combatant count and frequency during some encounters in higher difficulty levels. So if you're trying to do that nightfall at, at higher levels, maybe it's a little bit easier now. Uh, Face an issue where the Astrocyte Verse was applying volatile debuffs to unintended targets. I'm sorry, unintended objects. I think that was one way of uh, making, making, yeah, making non-people volatile. Which, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> doesn't need to disrupt detonators onto everything. You have tripmine <laughs> grenades, we're just going to make the entire map volatile. What could go wrong? I mean, I'm a fan. Don't judge me. <laughs> uh, also, if you had too many perks active at the same time, it could kick you to orbit. So if you were enjoying too many perks, so that's been fixed, you can have all the perks you want now. Uh, the fixed an issue where shotgun damage had more fall off than intended when aiming, aiming down sights. Special ammo could be generated by swapping weapons very quickly. Uh, the Necrochasm's Curse Thrall arc explosions dealt less damage than intended to combatants. And they've updated the Necrochasm Catalyst description to reflect the actual requirements needed. It unlocks after obtaining 35 essences of the Oversoul, with no combatant defeats needed. <sighs> Abilities. Our poor strand warlock, Weave Walk. While the players in Weave Walk, Arc Soul, and No Time to Explain drones deal reduced damage. Any perch threadling deployed while the players in Weave Walk will deal reduced damage. Players can no longer dunk the spark while in Weave Walk. While carrying the spark, the damage resistance provided by Weave Walk is reduced. So the Weave Walkers, a little less Weave Walky. Uh, for the artifact, they fixed an issue where the monochromastic maestro was not working with Strand. Just not at all. The elemental munitions was granting more special and heavy ammo than intended. In combination with the whirling maelstrom strand hunter aspect, fixed an issue where the high energy crucible bounty w- did not progress on energy weapon kills. Not very high energy at all. Fixed an issue where the description of the ritual violent seasonal challenge was asking for combatant kills from season of the witch instead of the ritual playlists as it was intended. It fixed an issue where the feature quest tile had a higher cursor friction than intended. So that's a thing. Uh, the description of Savathun Spire now properly reflects its two difficulty options and probably takes away the, you know, uh, legend level matchmaking that doesn't really exist. And the season pass will now properly reflect, reflect past ownership state, past the rank 71 reward. And the dance off e-boat now correctly reflects the additional effects when viewed in the Eververse. Thank God for that. All right. Well, we figured out respawn was spawning into the swamp. So problem solved. We, we, we fixed it and answer the questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you tell the frame rate's different mm-hmm. when you're stuck in a swamp? Uh, well, not really. Um, the gators usually let us know. <laughs> Is it just all darkness? Is it just all darkness th- in the swamp? No, no. It's not. There's a surprising amount of light actually, because you know the the the, the swamp isn't a, a rainforest, right? We don't have a huge canopy. It's it's mainly just a lot of flatlands and water. So there's actually a ton of light. There's just also lots of other things you don't want to mess around with. Fair enough. Now, your swamp, on the other hand, I don't know how much light is in that swamp. Oh, very little swamp. Very little light in the swamp. Light, progress, anything. It's just, it's, it's all, just all darkness all the right. time. So I guess, we, you know, if you've been playing Destiny this week, you'll know what's happening this week in Destiny. And now we're going to tell you, via the magic of the internet and editing, what's happening next week in Destiny. So Night Demon, dun, take dun, it away. Dun. Hello and welcome to the seventh week of Season 22, Season of the Witch, starting on October 3rd, 2023. So for Week 7, let's get going with our Legacy rotation, starting with the Forsaken expansion. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. The Dreaming City this week is at a weak curse level, which means Petrovenge can be found in the Strand, and has the Broken Courier mission for the next week. The Blind World features Scorn enemies and the Plagues, Sycorus and Veracus. The Ascendant Challenge this week will be the Forfeit Shrine, which can be located over in the Gardens of Asilia on the Dreaming City. Next up, the Shadowkeep expansion. On the moon, the weekly story mission is Beyond. The Trove Guardian is located in Archer's Line, while the Wandering Nightmare is the Nightmare of Hawkis in the Anchor of Light. And the Nightmare Hunts this week will be Fogoth, Fear, 
Ghoul, Rage, and Tanix Isolation. For our Beyond Light expansion, on Europa this week, Kredis the Dark Priestess will be the Empire Hunt, Eventide Ruins will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Challenge will be Survival. For the 30th Anniversary expansion, Dares of Eternity Legendary Rounds are Vex, Cabal, and for the final round, Crota. The loot rotation will be on Week 4's rotation, with the Scatterhorn armor set, and the Pathfinder armor set being available. The weapons available this week will be the Stasis Precision Frame Shotgun, Fractithis, the Solar High Impact Frame Auto Rifle, Cryosura Milo, the Stasis Precision Frame Hand Cannon, Vogue Picula, the Arc Precision Frame Bow, Wolf Tone Draw, the Solar High Impact Frame Fusion Rifle, Iotona Draconis, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher, Canis Major, the Arc Vice Rapid Fire Frame Scout Rifle, Contingency Plan, the Kinetic High Impact Frame Pulse Rifle, Legal Action 2, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher, Outrageous Fortune, the Void Adaptive Frame Sword, Still Syllabus C14, and the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Sidearm, Spoiler Alert. For the Witch Queen expansion, the Witch Queen Weekly Story Mission is The Arrival, where the modifiers are Scorched Earth and Fire Pit, as well as Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Also this week you'll have Altar of Reflections Catalyst, and Altar of Reflections Insight. The Wellspring activity has been updated to include a featured Throne World weapon, Veritas Armor and a weapon pattern as its rewards. For the Lightful expansion, the weekly mission is Downfall, with Extra Shields, Lock Loadouts and Extra Champions, Barrier and Unstoppable Champions, Solar Threat, Scorched Earth, Kinetic Overcharge, Void and Solar Surges, with an Overcharge Weapon and Galvanized on Hero Difficulty only. The Partition mission will be Backdoor, Contest Mode enabled with Barrier and Overload Champions, Void Threat, Arc and Solar Shields, Shocker Modifier with Void and Strand Surges. And the Vex Incursion this week will be Zephyr Concourse. In addition, the Weekly Lightful Reset also refreshes the Pinnacle Drop for the Node Override Avalon Exotic Mission on the EDZ. For the Season of the Deep, all three fishing ponds are now exotic all week. Raids and Dungeons The Crota's End Raid Challenge this week is the third encounter, Iryut the Death Singer, called Equal Vessel. All six players must rotate the Chalice of Light buff in the same order throughout the entire fight. Each player cannot hold the Chalice again before all five other players have. Plus, if you complete the weekly challenge on Master, you'll get an Adept weapon. The Adept weapon you get is a random drop, but works on a knockout system. You will get a new one with every challenge you complete every week until you've unlocked them all. The King's Fall Raid Challenge this week is the fifth encounter, Oryx, called Hands Off. Players must not kill the same Ogre or Lighty tonight throughout the encounter. The Vow the Disciple Challenge this week is the first encounter, Acquisition, called Swift Destruction, where Guardians must kill all champions within a few seconds of each other on all rounds. The Vault of Glass challenge this week is the first encounter, Confluxes, called Wait For It, where every yellow bar wyvern must be killed as they sacrifice themselves to the Confluxes. The Deep Zone Crypt challenge this week is the third encounter, Tanix Part 1, called Of All Trades. Guardians must perform each role at least once, Operator, Scanner and Suppressor. The Garden of Salvation challenge this week is the third encounter, Consecrated Mind, called Staying Alive, where you must not kill the spawning Cycloxes in the first two rooms. And the last wish challenge this week is the fifth encounter, Riven, called Strength of Memory, where Guardians must not shoot the same Riven Eye twice. And for the first time, the Pinnacle Raid will be the Root of Nightmares over on Neptune, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Cataclysm, called Illuminated Torment. This is where every Tormentor must be killed by a player with a Field of Light buff. The second encounter, Scission, called Crossfire. No one can shoot the launch crystals on the side they're currently standing on. The third encounter, Macrocosm, called Cosmic Equilibrium. Players must swap all of the dark planets to the left side of the room and all of the light worlds to the right. And the fourth encounter, Nazarek, called All Hands. Each player in your fire team must trigger one node on each side before the damage phase begins. Also, with the Root of Nightmares being the featured raid, this does mean that you can farm the final boss for a chance at the exotic shotgun, Conditional Finality. The pinnacle dungeon for this week will be the duality over on the derelict Leviathan on the moon. And the exotic mission rotator will be Presage, with the Dead Man's Tail exotic scout rifle being the main reward. Craftable weapons available from this mission include the Arc Adaptive Glaive, Nezarex Whisper, the Stasis Aggressive Frame Rocket Launcher, Bump in the Night, the Kinetic Precision Frame Scout Rifle, Tears of Contrition, the Void Adaptive Frame Trace Rifle, Hollow Denial, the Kinetic Precision Frame Auto Rifle, Fire Fright, the Solar Lightweight Frame Shotgun, Without Remorse, the Kinetic Adaptive Frame Hand Cannon, or Stringer, the Solar Sidearm, Drang Baroque, the Solar Adaptive Frame Sniper, Beloved, and the Solar Submachine Gun, Callus Mini Tool, with the Idolum Pursuant Armor Set. 
Next up, challenges. Acolytes Ascent 7. Complete week 7 of the Blade Path quest for challenge XP. Power Caster. Defeat 100 combatants with power weapons in Season of the Witch activities for challenge XP+. Plus. Ritual Rampage. Rapidly defeat 50 combatants and defeat 25 challenging combatants in the Altar of Summoning for challenge XP. Boom Slayer. Defeat 200 targets with rocket launchers or machine guns. And bonus progress by defeating guardians or by defeating combatants in Season of the Witch activities. Or Challenge XP+. Plus. Lost in Legend. Complete a Lost Sector on Legend or higher. For Challenge XP+, Plus and Bright Dust. Guardian Spirit. Assist your allies via revives, healing, overshields and subclass buffs in Vanguard, Gambit or Crucible playlists. For Challenge XP+, Plus and Bright Dust. Gotta win them all. Complete activities in Vanguard, Gambit or Crucible playlists. Bonus progress is granted for completing Vanguard playlist activities at hero difficulty or higher, or for winning Gambit or Crucible matches. For Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. Enlightened Gambit. Defeat 200 targets with the Arc, Solar or Void subclass equipped in Gambit. Bonus progress is awarded for Ability Final Blows and Guardian Final Blows. For Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. And Rapid Precision. Get 150 Rapid Precision Final Blows. Bonus progress is granted for every defeated target after the second one. For Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. Hello! Hello. As a reminder, your daily loss sector will show you a flag outside which will give you details of threats, shields, champions and exotic armor you will find inside. But if you're new to the game or using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the loss sector normally to have it show up on your map as a legend slash master. Which you can either do solo or with a fire team. But you'll only be able to earn a chance at the exotic drop when completing solo. Tuesday, October 3rd will be Vel's Labyrinth on the Cosmodrome for exotic boots, Arc Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Arc and Solar Shields, Fire Pit Modifier, Overcharged Shotguns with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Wednesday, October 4th will be Exodus Garden 2A on the Cosmodrome for exotic gauntlets, Void Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void Shields, Scorched Earth Modifier, Overcharged Linear Fusion Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Thursday, October 5th will be Sepulchre on the Throne Rod for Exotic Chess, Solar Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Solar and Arc Shields, Fire Pit Modifier, Overcharged Fusion Rifles with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Friday, October 6th will be Extraction on the Throne Rod for Exotic Helmets, Arc Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Arc and Void Shields, Raider Shield Modifier, Overcharged Glaives, with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Saturday, October 7th will be Metamorphosis on the Throne Rod for Exotic Boots, Arc Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Arc and Solar Shields, Scorched Earth Modifier, Overcharged Machine Guns with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Sunday, October 8th will be the K1 Revelations on the Moon for Exotic Gauntlets, Void Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Arc Shields, Fire Pit Modifier, Overcharged Machine Guns with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. And finally, back round to Monday, October 9th, will be the K1 Communion on the Moon for Exotic Chess, Solar Threat, Arc and Strand Surges, Solar and Void Shields, Arachno Modifier, Overcharged Linear Fusion Rifles, with Barrier and Overload Champions. Lead the way. Our seventh featured Nightfall of the Season will see us face off against Alakul in the Lightblade over on the Throne World, where you have a chance to get a Pinnacle Engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 200k or more. This Nightfall will require you to own the Witch Queen expansion. You'll be able to earn high-end gear for your characters including the Nightfall featured weapon, exotic gear, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, ascendant shards and adept Nightfall ciphers. The higher the Nightfall difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and exotic gear being uncommon at hero difficulty to being common with ascendant shards in Grand Masters. Legend and Low Nightfalls will have 8 barrier, 2 unstoppable and 7 lucent champions, with 6 solar and 12 arc shields. Masters will have 12 Barrier, 3 Unstoppable and 7 Lucent Champions, with 6 Solar and 8 Arc Shields. Your Nightfall modifiers are Hero Difficulty, Maximum Effective Level 1765, Matchmaking is available, Enemies have Extra Shields, Champions Foe, you will face Barrier, Unstoppable and Lucent Champions. You can either use Intrinsic Exotics, use a Subclass Debuff or unlock Anti-Champion mods from the Seasonal Artifact. Arc Threat, 25% increase to incoming Arc Damage, Empath, Enhanced Radar, take increased damage from melee. Overcharged Weapons, Weapons overcharged from the Seasonal Artifact are active in this activity. Kinetic Weapons do increased damage when your subclass element matches an active Surge. Arc Surge, 25% bonus to outgoing Arc damage. Void Surge, 
25% bonus to outgoing void damage, overcharge grenade launcher, 25% bonus damage with grenade launchers, galvanized, combatants have more health and are more difficult to stun. Legend difficulty, maximum effective level 1815, includes all previous modifiers except galvanized, no matchmaking, equipment locked, you will be unable to change your equipment once the mission starts, master difficulty, Maximum effective level 1820 includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. Champions mob, this difficulty adds more champion enemies. Chafe, the radar is disabled. Grandmaster difficulty, maximum effective level 1815 includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. Join in progress disabled. Extinguish, if your fire team falls in a restricted zone, your team is returned to orbit. Limited revives, gain additional revives by defeating champions up to a maximum of 20. And Contest Mode, which caps your power level to make enemies more of a challenge. To combat champions this season, you have access to subclass counters as well as a choice of intrinsic anti-champion artifact mods, which are Anti-Barrier Auto Rifle, Anti-Barrier Bow, Unstoppable Scout Rifle, and Unstoppable Fusion. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. For Anti-Barrier, the Kinetic Bow Wish Ender, the Kinetic Linear Fusion Rifle Arbalest, the Kinetic Pulse Rifle Revision Zero, the Solar Energy Hand Cannon, Ariana's Vow, the Solar Heavy Sword, the Lament, and the Titan Gauntlet, Second Chance, which gain a second charge of a shield throw melee, which becomes shield piercing and stuns barrier champions. And for Unstoppable, the Kinetic Fusion Rifle Bastion, the Kinetic Hand Cannon, Malfeasance, the Kinetic Scout Rifle, Touch of Malice, the Solar Energy Sidearm, Devil's Ruin, the Void Heavy Bow, Leviathan's Breath, and the Hunter Gauntlet, Athris's Embrace which have a chance to stun unstoppable champions with their empowered weighted knife. The Nightfall featured weapon to obtain this week will be the Arc High Impact Frame Fusion Rifle Loaded Question. The Loaded Question has a base impact of 90, a range of 52 and stability of 25. It can roll with Controlled Burst, Reservoir Burst and Harmony, with Envious Assassin, Under Pressure and Auto Loading Holster. It has the origin trait of Stunning Recovery, where if you stun a champion you partially refill the magazine, trigger health regen and improve your recovery for a short duration and Vanguard Vindication, where final blows with the weapon grant a small amount of health. Lord Shaq brings Momentum Control to the Crucible for the seventh week of the season. Momentum Control is a 6v6 PvP mode which is a variation on the regular control mode, where every weapon is significantly higher in lethality, meaning that you can take out your opponents much faster than normal. Respawns are instant, and defeating enemy players in Momentum Control will grant faster regeneration on your melee, grenade and super. Players get increased damage resistance when they activate a super, to help counteract that little bit of extra damage that the guns give out. The mode also has increased capture speed on points and the radar is removed for every player. Achieve victory by capturing zones and defeating opponents. And Clash will also be available in the Relentless Crucible playlist. Clash is a 6v6 PvP mode where level advantages are disabled, and points are gained through scoring kills against the opposing team. Players are not penalised for low map control, and can bunker down together or fan out as they see fit. Strength in numbers is paramount as a lone player can be picked off very quickly by team shooting enemies. Heavy ammo can swing the balance of a match, so controlling the box can be the key to winning. Super usage, both offensively and defensively, is one way to break the deadlock. Plus, available in the Crucible Labs playlist this week will be the new game mode Checkmate Survival. Checkmate Survival is a modified version of survival. Just like in the regular mode, each team starts with a pool of shared respawns. The respawn pool cannot be refilled, and when a player dies they will consume one life from that pool. Players have a 7 second respawn timer and when the team's respawn pool is depleted, players who cannot respawn remain in spectator mode until the round or match ends. Each round also features a 2 minute timer after which the round ends or enters overtime. Winning a round can be done by defeating opponents until they've depleted their respawn pools and eliminating the ones still standing, or by having more lives left when the time runs out. If the timer runs out whilst the teams are tied, the round enters overtime. One more minute is added to the timer and a capture point from the control mode is introduced to the map and both teams lose their unused respawns. The team that captures the point wins the round. If overtime also ends in a tie, the round ends and no teams receive the points. The first team to win four rounds is declared the winner of the match. Don't forget that the checkmate parameters are in play, with primary weapon damage being tuned to feel a little differently from the rest of the game. Players also have increased health and passive regeneration of the grenade, melee and class abilities have all been reduced by 50%, and supers by 40. Also, you will not spawn in with special ammo, Instead, you will have to earn it by generating points from kills, assists, deaths, zone captures and gathering heavy ammo. You won't lose points accumulated on death and special ammo you earn persists through lives and rounds. Additionally, you will not drop special ammo on death. Delicious.
delightful! And at Saint 14, we'll be back at the weekend with Trials of Osiris Dominion, bringing with him a whole host of rewards for players who do make it to the lighthouse and open the chest. These include the Heroes Wake Exotic Ghost Shell, the Valiant Memory Exotic Ship, the Survivor's Journey Exotic Sparrow, a new armor set, and the new Trial Shader, Bloodline Feud. Trials of Osiris Dominion is a 3v3 PvP high stakes game mode with a twist of a capture point. In Dominion, two teams of three go head to head in a battle for control of a capture point. Teams can either work together to capture the control point or eliminate the enemy team to win the round. Only available from Friday Reset until Tuesday Weekly Reset, Trials gives every player the chance to show off their PvP skills to obtain some of Destiny's most sought after weapons and armor. Players that compete in Trials of Osiris will have all of their games tracked to a passage card, a ticket purchased from Saint 14 in the lower hangar of the tower. Winning rounds and matches in Trials of Osiris will grant exclusive weapons, armor, pinnacle gear, masterwork materials and even adept gear for the most skilled players who can reach the lighthouse with a flawless ticket of 7 games won and no losses. 5 round wins will bag you the match for your passage card. By competing in trials you do have a chance to pick up 2 pinnacle engrams from playing each week, one from 50 round wins and the other from winning 7 games. These do not have to be done all in one go, but you do have to complete them before the weekly reset. That is amazing. This week will also see the return of the Grandmaster Nightfall selection node, which means you will be able to select any Grandmaster Nightfall from this season to complete or gild your Conquest Seal. And that's it for week 7 of Season of the Witch. Hi Art Guardians. Guardian down. Want puppies? Uh, those are not puppies. Those are significantly larger than puppies and they will eat you. L larger doggos? Huh? Squirrel. Squirrel! Large yeah, doggos? Yeah. Medium doggos? All right, well, My wife is watching the, the, um, the Swamp People TV show or whatever, and she's talking about gators and this and that and the other, because I grew up in Louisiana, and I actually used to hunt gators with my grandpa. And I'm like, like I don't know if it's staged or whatnot, but I do know you don't stick your hand in water to grab a rope when there's a gator on the other end of it. Nobody does that, <laughs> okay? That is as um, ignorant as you can get. Have... Just, just quick, quick question, quick question, minor tangent. Have you met the people of your current state? Right. Just, uh, just, just to be something out there. I'm the same I go there at least once a year, so <laughs> <laughs> I would say I'm yeah. the same but... new tangent. How frequently do you go noodling? Uh, I, I, every time I go back, I go at least one day with my uncles. Nice. And we don't use noodles. We use um, two liter jugs. I thought it was yeah. duct tape on your own arm. I thought that's how you do it. Oh, you're talking about the catfish thing. Oh, I thought you meant... Okay, so there's a thing where you hook fishing line to noodles, like the pool okay. toy noodles, or two liter drinks and things like that, and you chuck them in the water and you come back later. And if you see that it's moved, or you see that it's bobbing or whatever, you know you got a fish on it, and you just use a hook to grab it, and you caught a fish without actually fishing. For I thought folks that's for whom fishing is too strenuous. This is... Well, I mean, it's boring. <laughs> I won't. What are you? It's yeah. called fishing, not catching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's called hoping for the best. Yeah, really, it really it's called just sitting fight. outside and, you know, hanging out. And the things you see people do, like, it's so boring you have to bring beer to do it. And that leads to awful decisions. Like playing Destiny 2, for example. No, yeah, only good decisions. <laughs> Speak, yeah. Speaking of which, something I've been meaning to ask you the last couple of weeks, and you may not have an update as you've not been playing it. Have you been playing Destiny at all on the stream deck? Yes. And and how does it like how does it perform? Like like and I'm not like I, I'm thinking of getting one, not because I want to like, you know, jump into trials or high end PvP or like, you know, raid on it. Mm -hmm. But I'm, if I'm just running, you know, seasonal activities, you know, strikes, things that don't require you know, if it if it lags for a minute, like it's not the end of the world, like I'm not trying to get I, you know I, I'm head no lagging. And I don't really see a whole lot of frame rate drops either, but um, at the same time, you also have to keep in mind you're on a really small resolution, uh, right. so there's not a whole lot to process. So you can put it on a pretty decent, you can put some decent specs on there, and it, the game look pretty good and run pretty good too. Nice. Only yeah, problem I mean, I mean, is, is you have to install Windows on it, and oh, that right, is yeah. a process. I mean, I got it to work. I got, I got Windows, and having Windows on this thing actually affords me a lot of cool things like i can have discord on the steam deck now i've uh i've installed obs i haven't run obs on the steam deck yet <laughs> yeah i was i'm not trying to go i mean discord you could have run on linux anyway but yeah but yeah i'd again I, I keep looking at it going could this be a nice little chill you know play destiny play destiny in a mobile again not trying to do high-end things understanding the limitations mm -hmm. of the handheld thing 
mm-hmm. which in my head is you know a, a, an old Game Gear from back in the day. That's where my brain goes. Obviously, it's it, much it's more powerful than Game Gear. Good. It's surprisingly <laughs> good for for what you have in your hand. Even the um, oh, what was that game? That high end game that 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 uh, Souls like that came out recently. That Souls like uh, gun game. What am I talking about? Anybody? I was just gonna say Crisis, but yeah, I don't know. No, okay, hold on. Let me double check. Why am I being sucked into a, a thing? What the hell is happening? Is that that's what it does? That's not enough it. information. Yeah. All right. Uh, no, in Destiny, there was like something pulling on me, but I didn't see any anything actually pulling on me. But no. Um. So games such as the that's First cool. Descendant, I play without any issues on there. Remnant Two, that's what it was. I played Remnant Two on there, um, without any real frame drops. Now, the the graphics were not the greatest, but it was absolutely playable. You know, is Remnant Two online or is it? I don't know. I, I I've it's heard both. of it, but I'm learning about it's it. It's online. You, you have the capability of going online, but you could also just kind of put it on your uh card and play like on an airplane, and it'll just sync back up to Steam once you land again. I would say, hey, okay, you know, okay. what we have in the cloud is different from what's on your device. What do you want to use? And you say, you know, upload my device to the cloud kind of thing. So, yeah. You or you totally say, I did terrible point. things. Let's uh, let's go back to what, what you think I did. <laughs> we'll just erase those last couple hours. Yeah, I may or may not have killed a, killed a village that I didn't mean to. Testing a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Um, but yeah, so Steam Deck, I mean, it is what it is. You know, it's it's a fancy game gear, so don't expect high-end PC graphics, but it, it's also right. not Game Boy graphics either. So, yeah, yeah. It, I think yeah. it's I mean, yeah, I, I mean, you know, you're talking to someone who played this, you know, Destiny on the Xboxes as they've come along. So, like, I'm not used mm-hmm. to, you know, high-end, you know, 8,000 frames a second, you know, eye-blistering speed to going, hey, if, if it runs well enough for me to complete things and not be, you know, a detriment, you know, if I'm playing Gambit or running a strike or a nightfall, I just don't want to be a detriment to my team because I'm sitting here shooting at something that doesn't exist or because I'm lagging all over the place. Well, that that has that that's just your internet in general. As far as like the hardware, you're not going to be lagging because of the hardware. Now, if you're in a spot like a like in a an airport or a hotel or something like that where you have the sketchy internet, you're probably going to lag and you're going to be shooting some invisible enemies, right? But that's not the that's not the handheld's fault, you know. Yeah, that's not his fault. Yeah, yeah. Especially I mean, since I mean, it's on sale now for like I think four hundred bucks. It used to be almost eight hundred dollars, I think, and then they've cut the price in half. So now that it's that price, is pretty good. There's also a competitor made by the Republic of Gaming. Uh, was that Asus? I think makes that. And um, I don't know anything about that, but it's basically another Game Gear. Uh, not Game Gear. <laughs> another Steam Deck. So that's also an option if you. Or looking into something like that too, but I don't know how much it costs. I don't know how it compares to the Steam Deck or anything like that. You'd have to but do your own research exist. on that. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Asus Tech, yeah. ROG. I, I've seen the ROG and never thought about what it stood for. Republic of Gaming. Republic of Gaming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Asus yeah, is really... a really good company too. So I have high hopes for that thing because can you play WoW on it? Um. If you install if you install Windows on it, I'm sure you probably could. Um, I don't know what kind of graphics you're gonna have. <laughs> I don't know how intense of WoW is. It's been a minute since I played it, but yeah, you could absolutely install Windows on it and install all things that Windows can install. It also gives you the option to even upgrade to Windows 11 if you want, and it keeps complaining about, "Hey, you're not on Windows 11. Do you want to do it? No. What about now? No. What about now? No." But, but what what what's the lowest Windows I can use, and how many services can I strip out of it? Right. Because if yeah, I'm using it as a gaming machine, I, I want to be like, can I throw Windows Seven on this and strip out every un, you know inessential service and well, half the essential be services? Because I, I don't care about the rest of it. I don't, I don't need to join a network. I don't need printer. I don't need. <laughs> I don't need all the crap that's going to run. Well, you would need a network if you're going to download games, so that you would need. But um, well, right, network. But, but like, I don't. I don't need. I don't need to be in the network neighborhood. I, I don't need to be part right. of an Active Directory. I don't need to. I don't need to see the rest of the world. I don't care about those people. I'm gaming. <laughs> right, but the the thing is, is the the website itself, right, on Steam tells you how to install Windows 10 and Windows 11 if you're so inclined, right. It does not tell you how to install any other Windows. So if there's basically you install Windows and you have to have specialized drivers to work with the uh, the Steam Deck. 
mainly the controls that are built into it and how to open yeah. up a keyboard to type things because there's no keyboard on the thing, right? So you got to have a way to pull out the keyboard so you can type. I usually have my Windows uh, virtual keyboard just always set and ready to go at the mm-hmm. bottom, just minimized. So, yeah, there, there's all kinds of workarounds, but if you want to install anything earlier than Windows 10, you'd have to look up the community, like in the yeah, Reddit or whatever, it, to see what they yeah. got. Yeah, like it's probably not. I'm just looking. I'm looking at Destiny's requirements. You know, Windows seven sixty four bit, Windows eight point one sixty four bit. Dear God, no. You know, or Windows ten sixty four bit, and thus I assume Windows eleven. You know, they recommend yeah. Windows ten. I, I don't think I would realistically go anything older. Windows just cause w- why? <laughs> Windows ninety eight. Well, 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 I mean, you know, finding seven <laughs> or eight like end of life and a support. Yeah. I don't want to run something that's an obvious security hole on my network, but. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, you know, if they're like, here's a, here's the instructions, that means we support it, this will work, versus you can try to hack your way around it, but good luck. Yeah, they support it. They also tell you how, how to back up if you screw something up. Um, they show you how to install it on the SD card, which is what I did. They also show you how to install it on its internal uh, hard drive if you want to do that. I don't recommend that because the biggest you can get is 500 gigs. And when you're downloading they games, have a terabyte. 500 gigs doesn't uh, go very oh, far. Oh, do yeah, yeah, no, you can absolutely th- throw a terabyte in there. Yeah. You, you you can absolutely run a terabyte SD I, card I run a and terabyte, terabyte SD card, NVMe. Yeah, in mine exactly. Yeah, you can you can get two terabytes into it between the SD card and the NVMe storage. It has to be at least an A two in uh, SD card though. A one is just not going to work. It's not fast enough. Yeah, yeah. So this is wildly uh, interesting. Can I run it on my Raspberry Pi? Uh, probably. <laughs> no, because it's ARM. And while there is an ARM version of Windows, dear God, don't no, just no. <laughs> No, 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 no. You can no, install no, no. whatever Windows you want on there. Uh, you can also install uh, Linux There's... and install Wine and play. No, you can't play. You can't play it on Wine. Never mind. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, Raspberry Pi is ARM hardware, so ARM processor. So while there is, or at least um, was, a Windows version for ARM, I don't know if it still exists. And, and you, no, you, you don't want to do that because there, well, there, there is no, guy, there, there was no video that made a super computer out of Legos and about. <laughs> 64 Raspberry Pi? No. Yeah, about 64 Raspberry Pis and Legos. And you made a supercomputer. So, uh, I don't know what your budget is. Uh, But I can send you a video. You can run a a large language model, but you're not running a video game. Uh, Link in the comments. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. Now that we've gotten to the point. It's it's definitely a good alternative, because now my wife is all like, so you haven't taken your laptop with you to work in a while? I'm like, yeah, I'm not using it. I'm using the, uh, the Steam Deck. She goes, can I have it? I'm like, have is a strong word. Uh, you can absolutely use it, but I'm not going to say you can have my Alienware, you know? But yeah, so mm-hmm. she's got my, my Alienware laptop now because when I'm at home, I have the desktop, and when I'm gone, I take the Steam Deck. So it's definitely worth it. For 400 bucks as a, as a portable gaming device, you really can't beat it. You know, for what you can do with it. You can install Windows, you can play games directly off of Steam Deck, except for Destiny. <laughs> um, cause, cause, and, and everyone's like, why Destiny? Why do you have to install Windows? Because Destiny on the Steam Deck, it triggers the... Uh... Steam, Steam Deck runs, runs Linux by default. So, and Destiny said, we don't support Linux. Period, full stop. So, nope. you know, you have to run it on a, on a Windows environment. Yeah, virtualized the, the, or otherwise, but it has to be on Windows. Kicks in and Banji. Yep. This is the long and short of it. Well, since I have my free IT on here, will they ever uh, be somebody that'll make Windows work enough on the new Macs with their proprietary processors? Actually, you you say that, but yes, they just came out with something that if you have an NVIDIA graphics card inside a Mac, there's a program that you can use that will uh run the game off of the graphics card even if you're on a Mac. You have to install specialized NVIDIA software, but yeah, you actually can play gaming on a Mac. Now. You're still running that from the cloud though. You're not running it from cause because the M1 and M2, basically the new Macs use ARM processors like the Raspberry Pis do. Okay. Long like, like the long and short of it, like there again, there are Windows version, you know, Windows versions that run on ARM processors. But it's like, yeah, we did this, but we don't really care about it. So does it exist? Yes. Is it any good? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and do they even still support it? Who who knows? Not only so, do they support it, they're coming maybe. up with a new version of it. I just saw it the other day. Whenever I asked you about the 
what to get my wife for a Mac for her video editing and whatnot. I took a look into it, and yeah, they, not only are they still supporting NVIDIA, but there's newer uh, softwares coming out that's going to support it even better uh, here in the next year. Uh, I was talking about Windows supporting the ARM processor, but yeah. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, I mean, the NVIDIA stuff on, on, yeah, NVIDIA doing their stuff in the cloud, perfect, wonderful, beautiful. Mm. That's why I keep seeing the you can game on a Chromebook ad on YouTube every 15 seconds. Yes, that, yes, Red that, that same light. thing yeah. is how you play on a Mac, that same process. Yeah, yeah. which is I'm, cloud gaming. Same thing, you, can, you know, same thing you can do from your Xbox, same thing you can do, whatever. It's, you're, you know, you're, you're running the game on a, on a piece of hardware in a data center somewhere, and it's just streaming the video to your machine. You know, it, it's Netflix for gaming. I'm a big Apple fanboy, and the new phone is actually going to be running locally dedicated gaming hardware. The 15 on the phones. It's yeah. I mean, it's but it won't be Destiny, which is the only game I'm interested in. So <laughs> my wife just got but a 15 last week. Maybe I should try playing on her 15. How do you play games? We'll take a look at it. You won't be playing Destiny, but you can play, you know, and of course, more to follow. There will be more of them coming, but uh, their hardware is just bonkers. I love it. Well, their hardware is that. Okay, so here's the misconception their hardware isn't bonkers, right? Their hardware is actually less than what you would find in an Android. Well, but well, the exception. Well, well, hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry, I didn't But go the ahead. exception is this, right? Apple only accepts stuff that was made to accept Apple software specifically right that's why all the crap is proprietary proprietary connections proprietary hard drives proprietary that everything's proprietary because it has to work with their software seamlessly right so you're getting significantly higher uh synergy between its hardware and software than you would with like an android that has to work with everything right so even though you have less hardware air quotes than like the the, the same android it's hardware and software work so much better with each other than an Android does with its hardware because it's got to have all these, all these different things to accept all these different connections, all these different whatever. A Android is like Windows; it has to accept everything for it. Whereas Apple's like, nope, we don't want that crap. We want it to be made like this for this and compatible with this, so it works seamlessly. So it gives you the illusion of being significantly faster, even though it just works more seamlessly. Well, well, yeah, I mean, that's the Apple controls the entire stack, hardware, software. So, so I mean, yeah. it's going to run faster because they control the entire experience. They can say you're only running stuff that's going to excel on this hardware. You know, yeah. it's like it's like making a game that says you're going to run this on the Xbox because it, it is absolutely tuned for the exact spec of this Xbox hardware. Mm -hmm. I mean, same idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, because yes, so I'm an next Android week on the Apple Podcast. <laughs> We're not, yeah. Everyone's like, oh, well, Apple's so much better. It's not. It's just an illusion. It's not it really is. better. Their <laughs> chips are very good. They're very efficient, and they're very powerful. Well, yeah, they're very efficient because they're made to work with their Apple software specifically, on their Apple hardware right. specifically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't have to support everything under the sun. I mean, I mean, you know, that's you know, people have built Hackintoshes forever because I mean, the components are just the same thing. So the same components, it's just they have to be specific things, you know. It, it, and again, to support the hard, to support the software, you can build. You know, you know, you're not building your well, unless you're unless you're sourcing your parts from China, you're not building yourself a, uh, an iPhone. People have done it, but you know, you, you know, you can again. We're, we've gotten way off topic now. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, we're still on topic. We're talking about playing <laughs> Destiny on various devices. We are absolutely on topic. All right, we didn't squirrel off into oblivion. We might not be doing the TWAB, but it's Destiny related. For those of you that want to play on an iPhone or a Mac <laughs> or a Steam Deck or an Android or fill in the blank. <laughs> uh, so we were talking about breaking Destiny and TWABs and Twids and Twerps yeah. and Twats. Right. Yeah, and playing playing Destiny on on mobile mobile devices, which yeah, like, like I keep uh, literally the last couple of weeks I've been like I need to ask respawn because he mentioned getting one and mentioned playing it, and then I was like I need it because I'm sure other people are like if you know again if I if I have the two games I want to play Destiny being one of them, how well does it run? Because because unfortunately Destiny is not one of those things where everyone's like oh I've I've speed tested this and I run this and this and I'm like well, where's Destiny two? Come on, that that's the only game I care about. Right. I don't care how how the rest of these things run. I'm sure they're fine, but. And then it comes, it doesn't come with a dock, but you can get a dock for it. And then because I have a hard time nowadays playing with the buttons and the sticks, right? 
So I've just taken the dock and I'm plugging a mouse and keyboard and I'm mouse and keyboard gaming on the Steam Deck. You know? Mm-hmm. And you can also hook it up to an HDMI TV. I'm sorry, an HDMI cable to a TV. So you could technically just like a switch. You know how you put the switch on the thing and it shows up on the TV? Like that, but for Steam Deck. You know? And you can I use do. mouse and keyboard. Oh yeah, that means I have to learn mouse and keyboard. Ugh. I haven't mm. done that since the nineties. I don't know. You still get with a controller on a Mac? I didn't know you could do that. Oh, you have Xbox. Oh, God damn it. You could also game with a controller on a Mac. It's just Bluetooth. Bluetooth has never really worked for me, man. I don't know what it is. Like, like Bluetooth hates me. It works great for headphones. It works great for keyboards and mice. But as soon as I hook up an Xbox controller, even an elite one, it's like, hey, I, it's working for about five minutes and then it disconnects. And I have to uninstall it and reinstall it for another five minutes and uninstall and reinstall it. Like, I think the problem is the elite controller. That's where you're going wrong. I agree. You, you want the bargain bargain basement comes comes out of the box with the console controller. The fancy one, no, no, no. You, you want you want the trash one that's going to work great. Well, the um <laughs> the Astro controller actually, I I love that controller, man. Right. Mm. And if you don't know what that is, it's 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 a it's made by Astro Gaming. It's a controller, but the configuration handheld wise is similar to an Xbox, but you can change the left. Thumbstick and uh, button pad to either be Xbox or PlayStation configuration. You can swap them, right? The Elite did yeah. that too, didn't it? No, it had, it had. I had replaceable thumbsticks and pads. That was no, Elite in its Swappable, ability to take my like, money only. No, no, no. Like, like what I'm saying is like. So you know how the Xbox has uh, one thumbstick high and the other thumbstick low, right? And then you have the D-pad low and the, and the button pad high, right? But PlayStation has both pads high and both thumbsticks low, right? So with the okay. Astro Gaming, you can take the buttons and swap them in place of the joystick, and the joystick goes where the buttons were. So you oh, can okay. go to an, uh, an Xbox yeah. configuration or PlayStation configuration. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I had to pull up pictures because honestly, it's been a long time since I've seen a PlayStation controller. Yeah, you can basically switch like the, the position of the D pad and the thumbstick on the left side. Yeah, because Xbox has yeah, D pad, yeah, D pad high, thumbstick low, and vice versa. Yeah. yeah, I love the wired Razer Wolverine. I I, I love that I've too. Just, yeah, I've destroyed a lot of controllers, and this one just is a beast. It's it, it has not broken. Well, my Wolverines have broken significantly. I have a Wired Wolverine uh, Gaming Tournament Edition 2, and then I have the Astro for my wireless travel stuff. But the problem with the the um, the, the the Wolverines and whatnot is the pads on the sides where your hand sits, they come off, like, all the time for me. Every, every Wolverine controller I've ever had, the, those rubberized pads come off fairly early. And I don't it's like that. exactly the opposite for me. It was the elite that I'm totally delaminated, and this one's, you know, it's hanging in there. So knock on wood, I got a lucky one. There you go. But yeah, no, those also really good too. And I love how um, does you just have like the really short buttons so that you you decrease the um, the time it takes to press the button down because the buttons are almost flush with the controller. Yeah, it's got the switches underneath where I can select the depth, and it's got the yes. extra buttons below and. It's a very nice setup. I, it's I think nice. uh, it works for me. Mm-hmm. And I do like a wired controller. And then Razer, I think, is one of the few companies that use mechanical buttons in their controllers instead of... Uh, I forgot what the non-mechanical ones are called right now. but <laughs> Non-mechanical? Non-mechanical, yeah. Uh, so you get that nice crisp click when you press the the, the Razer controllers and it's very satisfying razor if you'd like to sponsor the podcast you can always go to patreon oh god we never get a razor you know you know you know how you know how to find this razor you know how to find us we we will happily be shills for you we we love we love things we love razor it's our favorite anybody who's seen my home system sees that i have the razor keyboard the razor mouse mat the razor mouse Speaker. Good I have stuff. Razor speakers yeah. now too, with the little lights on the bottom. It's ridiculous. <laughs> You're gonna need to resend respawn your most hardy battle tested. Bring it to a yeah. war zone because what I'm learning is respawn treats his gear hard. So you're going to need to really I give him a something. Lot. It just happens, right? Well, we, we, we know, that's what I'm saying. Like you know, you're going to need something road, you know, road tested, battle tested. You're going to need something out in the field. 
one of those, you know, Panasonic tough book style. You're, you're giving the guys working in the mines. Mm-hmm. That's what respawn needs to, to make sure it, 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 you know, makes it through airport security and being thrown around and, you know, who knows, who you knows know, what, the, what a use use those, abuse those those tough books still, and they are still going strong, dude. Like those tough books were made to Those last. tough books are indestructible. They are. Yeah. And, and even, even when they're partially destructed, they're still running. Squirrel. We we ran over one with a tank just to test it because I mean being in Iraq and we were bored in IT we're like hey you know we have this this one that nobody uses and it's barely functional let's let's put it under a tank it survived the shell cracked a little bit but it absolutely still turned on and you can use it I'm like that's that no that's way. crazy ain't no way dude yeah they are indeed tough books they are indeed tough metal shell rubberized keyboard very sturdy construction. Yeah. Plus, tanks are only like, you know, 17 tons, right? It's not like 17 yeah, tons can break half half half. That's it. That's, that's it's only, And it's only half of that weight, really. It's only under one of the treads. So, no, you, you know, true, true. So it's really <laughs> only like eight, eight, you know, seven, eight tons, right? So I don't even think <laughs> we scientifically tested this. Correctly. It's not a valid test at that point. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if you dropped it out of a plane. On did you? Did you have a control tough book? <laughs> I didn't have access over... to a plane. We're, we're Marines, <laughs> not the Air Force. <laughs> Was that? Did, did you have a control group right over with both tank treads, one tank tread? Is there a very skinny tank where all the tank treads are together? Is there is there a unicycle tank? You could use yeah, just one tank, tank tread. No, no, this isn't World War One where you have the the tank where the whole entire back is open to expose you. <laughs> no, uh, but we did one, we did take a sledgehammer to one, and ah. Oh. It took a surprising number of work from three Marines to destroy one with a sledgehammer. <laughs> but I can count on a Marine to break something, I think. I think it's... Uh, dude, you put us in a padded room with a ball bearing. We'll break the ball bearing. Just give us time. All right. The story I heard is that there were two ball bearings. In the morning, one was broken and the other was missing. Yeah, <laughs> well, it wasn't missing. It was still there. Just, you know, we got hungry. Internalized, Yeah. <laughs> You know, when there's not crayons, you have to improvise, right? Um, Don't talk about what happened to the ball bearing. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry, give me about 24 hours, I'll give it back to you. (laughs) Now we're off topic! Okay. (laughs) Squirrel. Circle, well, circle of life has been completed. Yes. So we're, we're, now that we've gone all the way there, we're we're now going to jet all the way back. We've, We've circled the moon, and now we're on our way back into the solar system for this week in destiny for the 28th of September, 2023. Uh, Sam, Sam has written our twab. We will never call it a twid. Stop trying to make that happen. Uh, we talked about a bunch of things last week, but you heard those last week. So we're not going to tell you what they were because <sighs> you were here. You knew. And if you weren't here, go back and listen to the episode. Give yeah, us the numbers. Yeah. I mean, I mean, what are you, what, what are you even doing? Come on. I mean, but we have we have topics for this week. By we 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 mean Bungie, and Bungie means us because we are all one and the same. There's new rewards mm-hmm. to earn because because who doesn't love new rewards? There's a preview of next week next week's Checkmate weapons update. I've got some Checkmate thoughts, and Gunsmith focused world engrams. So there's new Nightfall and Trials rewards, and there's a very shiny bow. Respawn, do you like the shiny bow? Uh, it's very for fancy. Trial. Uh, I, I don't know. It, it, it's a very shiny bow. It's night, that's a Nightfall reward, and it looks great, Ooh. and I really? can't get anybody to do Grandmaster with me. So. Uh, Where's my... it's, it's a new precision you want to hear about it? To earn. I'll tell you what's on it. I do. Oh, you're looking at it, too. Tell, so, me, tell me the pretty bow. First tell me yeah, what it's, it's called and what I can get on it. Oh, it's another solar bow. Yeah, this is the Priestnax 4, which is a precision solar bow. Perpetual motion, archer's tempo, perfect float, shoot to loot, enlightened action, or rangefinder in the left column. And in the right column, you can have incandescent, collective action, successful warm up, opening shot, explosive head, and precision instrument. And as it's in the nightfall, you can get an adept version and you can have these incredibly fast precision bow if you get the right roll. So far, I've gotten none of them, but I've done a bunch of nightfalls. <laughs> well, hell, I'm going to have to go on some nightfalls to get the bow. Um, yeah. So I'm looking at uh, Archer's Tempo and Incandescent. Is, is looking like a good role for me. What are you aiming for? Well, I, I really have, have to go to my YouTube pros to figure all that stuff out. Um, you know, 
Use your brain. Think for yourself. <laughs> We, sir, you, sir, we are not here to think for ourselves. We are here to let the mans <laughs> on the YouTubes tell us what we should be going yeah. for, and then we should be going to get those. Or, yeah. or little open shop up precision and, and yeah. manager. Yeah. yeah. Well, Archer's Tempo for the speed, right? And then Incandescent yeah. for the single target explosive damage or the AoE explosive damage, right? So, or I mean, opening shot or precision instrument, because those are all going to help me get that first oh. shot. And, and, and so there's lots of options. Shot, I don't know about that. All that does is really give you extra range and since you, uh, range and accuracy. And since you have a bow, you already have the range and accuracy. So yeah. it just seems redundant to have, you know, opening shot. But what's the other one you said? Precision, Precision instrument. What's that do? I uh, have to look it up. Like I said, I have people for that. Uh, Precision has been dealing sustained damage increases precision damage. Oh, that's a good one. I'll give you that one. What column is so that? So precision, that the same precision bow. That's the right column. Yeah, you're swapping out your incandescent for that one. That that might not be bad. Archer's tempo with that. That sounds like pretty pretty good. Yeah. And so it's supposed to be top tier if you get the right rolls. Um, and I can't point you to a YouTube video, but I'll give some of that information to Mister Night Demon for the edit, and it'll be in the show notes. Okay. There's always like that GG or whatever the normies use nowadays. What did y'all use? This, that, D2, now that D2, like dot GGs for us old people? D2 Foundry dot GG. D2 Foundry dot GG. I gotta it's pretty that. and it has all the all the perks and all the things and all of the community research. Hey, what does this actually mean? Which light dot GG may also have? You craft your guns, right? To see. Yep. It's, it's, you, know, you can pull up the weapon. Spec it out for PVE, PVP, you know, wh what, where do you want to use it? And then it has all of the damage profiles and handlings, and it'll give you, like, I can tell you there's a 0.4 second perfect draw window, which means nothing to me as a non-bow user. But, you know, uh, it hey, just means how that, long a fancy you thing. can have the bow before it's in perfect, or how long you can hold perfect draw, right? So some mm. bows, that perfect draw, perfect draw is where you do the, the most damage. Right and mm. perks like uh, the poison perk on uh, that bow do its extra perky stuff. Right, is during the perfect draw uh, time. Well, unless you have you know oath keepers or whatever, you actually have to know how long that that draw is before you start to lose out on your damage. Right, so it says it's a point four second draw, uh, a perfect draw window. So that's telling me. Uh, once it comes back into the perfect draw, you have to release it in about 0.4 seconds uh, to get the perfect damage. Or it takes 0.4 seconds to get into its perfect damage, but that seems incredibly fast, so I don't think that's what that is. Yeah, there's there's also a, bra a draw time stat. So, nice thing about D2 Foundry, you can also say, let me put the Oath Keepers on, and now I have an infinite perfect draw window. It just mm -hmm. goes to infinite, so I can hold it all day long. And yeah, so so if you really want to build craft or just say, what are my options? You know, d2foundry.gg, light.gg. All good places to go to say, what does this thing do? What could I possibly get? And uh, is it any good? Yeah, and for you new players, the Oath Keepers is a hunter gauntlet that lets you hold a bow indefinitely without using stamina and without losing your perfect draw. It also gives you a damage buff to all legendary bows and some exotic bows. And apparently plus 40 to airborne effectiveness. So if you want to jump in the air and shoot the bow, like, you know, crazy Robin Hood. Nicholas. And yeah, who Robin doesn't? <laughs> if you want to slide down a set of stairs on a shield, tapping people, you know, there you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can live that dream with your new fancy precision bow from your Nightfall. Or not if you can't get one. You know, who's to say? I also see that there's a new grenade launcher here, too. Mm-hmm. It's very shiny, very gold. Very incandescent-esque grenade launcher. That's a heavy. It is a trials grenade launcher for all you trials gurus out there. If you're looking for that kind of thing. It's, is a grenade launcher even good? Yeah, I guess it is. Huh? Uh, so yeah. it is an adaptive heavy grenade launcher. It's a strand one uh, from Omelon. Omelon, Omelon, however you pronounce it. Uh, in the left column, you have Impulse Amplifier, Envious Assassin, that's good, Field Prep, that's good, Slick Draw, uh, I don't remember what that one is, uh, Enlightened Action, Auto Loading Holster, and Demolitionist. And in the right column, you have Cascade Point, Chain Reaction, that's very good, Explosive Light, that's also very good, 
Hatchling, full court, Vorpal Weapon, and Bait and Switch. Bait and Switch? As the standard perk? Look at you. Okay. So, uh, that grenade launcher actually seems like it might be worth going for for, you know, PvE DPS phases, right? So you can go to PvP, grab it, and then take it into PvE to use it with that whole bait and switch perk you got going on there. So, and what's the name of this lovely weapon if people want to look it up and um, try to figure out what they can get on it? Cat Cataphract GL3. I probably Absolutely. spotted that. Yeah, it it is worth mentioning too. If you now, I don't know how the new trials weapons work, but you know because because they basically buffed the trials weapons dropping just by playing trials. Like you don't have to go turn in engrams, you don't have to do anything just by showing up at the end of the game. You know, um, same fourteen rolls the dice and says says, do you get a weapon? Do you not get a weapon? I don't know if you would need to unlock this weapon first for being for it to be in the loophole. I'm guessing that's the case. But if you you know if you do just want to you know play you know jump into enough trials to get your weekly challenge done or because somebody suckers you into it you know it, they are dropping more weapons and you can you know make a little track go up to unlock this unlock this yeah. grenade launcher and add it to your you know possible loot pool for next season and beyond as well so is capture the flag trials coming up anytime soon is it currently up i mean because that's the mode that i enjoy is the capture the flag type because it's you know i think it's the easier version that's my opinion but no, whatever. Well, right now there is a point where you can go and capture it, or you can slay the other team. And so, in my my very very limited trials experience, um, it looks like you you get weapons when you're winning, not what do they call it? not games but matches. Those are the only times I got weapons. So you have to win. Not just play. That, well, but that's, sense. I mean, I played a dozen times and won twice, right? So I got two weapons. But so that's a very small sample. So each of you wins, sample. you got a weapon? Each of them, yeah. Not not oh. game wins, but, but matches, like whole matches. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, rounds of five. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's a, a very, very small sample. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but the, the you know, actual... you want to, you got to in yeah, that small yeah, sample. That's that I've released. Yeah, at I least, was I mean, say, in, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, hundred percent drop rate on on wins. Yeah, granted, the wins are few and far apart. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know, I played you know a couple of weeks ago, like three or four matches, uh, you know, during Crazy Glitch Weekend, and yeah, I got one weapon for you know the three I played or something, and two of which we won. So. You know, yeah. if you are, you know, if you are trying to get things to drop, or just you know, it's a, it's at least another way to farm for them. I don't mm -hmm. know. You know, most people look at this and go, "No, we're still not, still not going to touch it." It is the, you know, the the grenade grenade launcher is the weapon this week that's up this weekend. You know, and for, you know, for the flawless adept version, or just you know, there to be farmed. So, if you can't go flawless or have someone who can take you flawless, by all means, do so and get yourself a fancy grenade launcher. If not, then you can get gunned mm -hmm. down with the rest of us. <laughs> that sounds more plausible. <laughs> yeah, yeah that sounds but, right. Um, yeah, and I didn't I didn't earn it in the progression or anything. I got that grenade launcher, albeit a weak roll, just as a random drop. So Oh ni oh, oh so nice. You, you have the new cataphract thing. I, I yeah, I do. It's uh Oh that's it's, awesome. Yeah, so, so you don't have to rank, you don't have to rank up to unlock it first, it's just in the loop pool to drop. That's nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah and, I got and the then stunning. You, then you can uh, focus it. It's not it's not honestly the worst one. A chain reaction impulse amplifier proximity grenades so it's that's, a pvp that's pretty load good with, dude with volatile uh yeah i think once in a while i imagine that somebody from bungie is you know just wandering around looking at people playing and that they see me in there and they take pity <laughs> so we'll give, him, give him something <laughs> oh, this poor guy like he doesn't want to try that poor guy. Mm. Like, I, this man looks lost let's let's throw him yeah. a bone Right. He spent 10 hours in the raid and didn't get through the first encounter. Let's give him something. <laughs> Yo, that first encounter though, bro, that was that was something else. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, um it still is something else apparently. That that right. again, I I've I've done I've done exactly like, you know, three runs through the raid, two of those contest mode and one with a with a competent team other than me who was, you know, had worked together. I think that's 
that's going to be where you can tell, are we going to be successful in this raid? If you <laughs> struggle and you fail, because because honestly, I mean, the rest of it is, it, I mean, it's basically, it's the same mechanic throughout the rest of the raid. And it's yep. the same thing. There's just, you're, you're killing more. That part is really just, can you work together? Can you communicate? Because there's some thrall and stuff, but those are really not the threat. Like, yeah, you have to kill them so they don't completely overwhelm you. But the threat is not the thrall. It's the swinging lamps and the holes to fall into. And yeah. communicating with, with who has the buff and who's taking it and who's picking it up. If if you struggle to get through that, go find yourself a new group because you, you are not going to have greater success through the rest of it. I, I think well, that's sort of the, you, you know, some I, of the ways I, I have, have like, right. have like a DPS really check. Agree with that, that's like, sort of the vibe check. If you can, if you can get through that and communicate <laughs> and pass the vibe check, you'll probably be okay. If you can't do that, you're doomed for the rest of it. See, I, I mean, I don't know. I, th- that's that's your opinion. I'm of the fact that 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 part is harder than the rest. Like the rest of the raid, we go through hardly any problem, even if we struggle on that first part, right? But once we get past that first part, the raid is pretty much just uh, everything else is easier than that first part. I mean, like you said, it's 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 like we can do ad clear, right? You see an ad coming, you kill the ad, right? Even if you have the buff, you kill the ad. You just watch the timer, right? But in that part, you have the ads, you have the darkness, you have the pendulums, you have the holes. That part is so much harder than that same mechanic throughout the rest of the raid, you know? So I don't think that 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 should be a litmus test as to whether or not you can complete the rest of the raid. Because hell, you might as well just skip that part and do the rest of the raid, because the rest of the raid is significantly easier than that one damn part, you know? I'm with parody on this. I think it's a, a vibe check. It's not a DPS check. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. Again, like I said, very limited experience, but that seems like the, if you can work together enough to get through this, the rest of it is just coasting. Well, it's not really working together. It's, it's, you know, did you see the hole? Did you oh, see the oh, freaking sir, leg? Because I was, get all the I was there for that first run. It's working together. <laughs> <laughs> I've, yeah, I've seen three of what us not... were taking the things from <laughs> I've seen what not communicating works looks like, and I've seen what communicating works like. It's totally working together. <laughs> yeah, I've been in therapy since, and my therapist says we shouldn't talk about it. Really, <laughs> that seems that seems wrong. Uh, I, I, you might want to give yourself another therapist. Your therapist might actually be crowed. I'm not sure about this, but Maru whispering in your therapist's ear. Yeah, stay away from my loot. Your therapist is one of the destined two DDoSers. <laughs> <laughs> He's working against you. Oh, so you're saying Destiny <laughs> causes you stress? Job Ooh, security. Just don't play it. Come play Call of Duty with me. Look, I got here. I got a friend code for you. Here you go. Yeah. Well, if he's also a guy who's not playing anyways, does it make a sound? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. In fact, definitely <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, that's good. I like that. One. Well, speaking of, speaking of Call of Duty and friend codes, uh, we have a yeah. check, checkmate weapons update. Oh, uh, yes. Basically, uh, you know, they're they're doing some some weapons tuning and checkmate because, like, respawn or um, nineteen was t- telling us last week, it's hand cannon city. Everyone's got a hand cannon. Everyone's got a hand cannon. You've got a hand cannon, which I mean, to me, says that's Destiny PvP. What, what are you say, surprised? Yes. <laughs> apparently, they were they were you know, uh, Budgie's like there's there's some inconsistent times to kill and things. Uh, you know, yeah, you know, oddly enough, uh, these hand cannons. A lot of people are playing with these, and we don't know why. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Di- uh, uh, they say you know, diving with submachine guns and sidearms is becoming increasingly difficult to deal with as players learn that other primary weapons <laughs> could not kill as fast, and our mid-range options struggle to compete. Really. Mm-hmm. Similarly, we, they've reduced the lethality of the cro- close-range primary weapons, bringing them more in line with the mid-range ones. Scout rifles become op- oppressive without the threat of sniper rifles to keep them in check. And Sorry, prevent players what? from engaging scout rifles. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're a oppressive. Scout rifle gets beast. outbeaten by a hand cannon eight times out of ten. <laughs> well, wait. Well, there's not I mean, a sc- I mean, at scout rifle ranges, if there's no option for a sniper rifle, that that becomes the long range option. Unless Until you, you have a hand you know, cannon. You don't have any. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's what I mean, that's what they're, they're saying. You know, is like that's what that's what they're seeing in the numbers. Yeah. Uh, okay. They also, you know, they wanted to. Ad- you know, uh, avoid making a, an, they say, extremely jarring shifts in TTK. For example, things like the 140 hand cannon taking four shots to kill across the board. So we limited them to, to we, so we, we limited how much we move the TTK in general. TTK is time to kill. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, so, you know, after seeing checkmate in the blah, 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 after seeing checkmate in the wild for a week, we saw the substantial gap between hand cannon performance and everything else. So they say, you know, keep in mind we're we're looking at that while making these changes. So coming to checkmate next week. So not right now. So you know, next week starting on Tuesday. So if you played if you played checkmate up till now, and like Night Demon asked you to go go into checkmate, so you uh-huh. can give him your opinions. And then uh-huh. he had to go to a child's birthday party, so he's not here to hear <laughs> your opinions. <clears throat> here will be your experience starting on Tuesday. So your Devil's Ruin laser beam. Uh, or I'm sorry, they're going to increase the damage penalty. So increasing the damage penalty, uh, Devil's Ruin laser beam, 10%, 15%. The penalty before we go uh, further, like, like, like the, the drop they're off upping, is They're upping the down. Or... You know, the, the, these are the words. I, these are the words I have to play with. So these are the words you're getting from me. They are so increasing like, the damage. They're going to make them more powerful per shot, or no? Let's see if I read the rest of this word salad they've posted above to see if they actually, you know, will tell us. Do you guys want to talk about like the what checkmate is and what it's trying to be? We've already said checkmate because I think that kind of informs what these changes are. <laughs> Right, yeah. I mean, check, yeah, checkmate is the Call of Duty where basically, you know, the the special economy is severely limited. You know, the the ability the ability usage is extremely low, and it, it it's basically it's basically meant to be a more momentum momentum. It's meant to be focused on gunplay. If you just want to have that gunplay, like you still have abilities, but they recharge very slowly. The the special ammo you have to work to get, it's not just there for everybody to have. I think at its root, what really what they're trying to do is create another sandbox for PvP where there's a skill gap. And so yeah. you do that by by everything, you know, all the insta-kill stuff is tapered back. And you actually have to participate in in, you know, the game mode to get special ammo. So that kind of something that you and I have always complained about. You can't get anybody in Iron Banner to take to participate in the mode well now there's another thing driving towards it but really that it's going to be more of a mid-range fights rather than just whoever gets the first headshot you know leads towards skill gaps showing up seems more interesting to me than that's the current form of ppp but it's a whole nother so where i was going from that was to say they've created a whole nother area where they're doing micro tuning, which is what you're seeing in this next part of the post in an effort to create a, like a third balance, right? We had our PVE balance. We had our PVP balance. And now there's another PVP balance at a time when people are complaining that they're not putting out maps and they're not doing these things. And they say, we don't have the resources, but they've created this whole huge sink for resources i'm well, interested that's why in that. they don't have it... the resources because they're using it for this <laughs> duh. <laughs> duh i don't know well uh, I'll, uh, so, so, so needles so little blue it sounds like you've stepped foot into checkmate at some point i looked at it but uh, okay <laughs> I, yeah. did, I didn't know if you would yeah i know uh, night demon gave respawn and i homework last week to at least set foot into it i didn't know if you had experienced it or if or if you said i'll, I'll dip a tone to trials this week and that's enough suffering for me yeah, that was enough shots in the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's you know that was sort of the idea, you know. But you know, Bungie says I found uh, September fourteenth is where they sort of talk about the checkmate modifier. Uh, players will have a small bump of health with the just times to kill. Um, you know, they want to give players a little more time when dealing with with an extra decision or two. So it's been tuned to make be a more strategic gameplay. And you know, and and again, you know, they're tuning the weapons. They're continuing to tune the weapons. Uh, class abilities. Uh, regeneration times for grenade melee and class abilities is decreased by 50% and you know your passive regeneration for your supers is decreased by 40%. So again, you can still get kills and generate orbs to you know to get your super up but just the the charge time is going to be much much slower. So again, that's that's sort of their goal and again the special ammo economy just being you know you, you can't just be shotgun to death perpetually like you know you you, you don't drop your special on death but you sort of have to get kills and sort of accumulate points to get special ammo is you're not spawning with it. So it's not just, you know, special ammo for all everybody forever. Right. It's, it's a, uh, it's destiny with kill streaks. More or less. 
Which, I mean, kind of is what Destiny has always been, PvP, but eh. So yeah, they, so good context. They still don't tell us what the increased damage penalty is. So I guess it's basically, you know, they're going to increase the damage penalty. They're going to say, we, we've given these, you know, a penalty to damage, we're now we're going to make it more. Basically, we're, we're going to tune these down, make the time to kill longer. Uh, On your Devil's Ruin, Laser Beam, 10 to 15%. Uh, Fighting Lion is going from 0 to 20%. Which I think we called out last week. Going, that's a primary grenade launcher that can already be a menace in, in the in the wrong sorry you know wrong or right hands depending. Uh, right. So yeah, so we're gonna bring that down. Bows zero to ten percent. Gee, who would have thought bows would have been a problem if, if there wasn't that bow reigning supreme and crucible for the last how many years? <laughs> the one bow in never, specific though. <laughs> it's never saw that one. coming. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So those are the three things they basically smacked down and said, "These are too quick. We need to, we need to, you know, smack these on the head." Now we're going to reduce the damage penalty on these three things. So sidearms from ten percent to five percent, submachine guns five percent to zero percent, and scout rifles ten percent to nine percent. So, so sidearms, submachine guns, and scout rifles are going to come up a little bit as far as time, you know, you know, damage and, and you know a little bit quicker time to kill, and then they're going to increase. The bonus damage, so they're going to bring these things even further up. They, they're just saying, you know, we're giving you a little more damage on auto rifles from zero to two percent, and pulse rifles from zero to five percent. What was the handgun again? Thirty percent, you said. Uh, and then finally, reducing the bonus damage on hand cannons from ten percent to seven percent. So I'm calling it. Suros regime is going to come in because if you can get a kill and get that little boost of health, you're just going to break their hearts. That and team shooting. Everybody has to run around in a pack, like in the old days. Hard light, so hard so lights so for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> zeros and hard light. Yeah, so basically, mm. Devil's Ruin, Laser Beam, Fighting Lion, and Bows. They're they're reducing the damage on sidearm, submachine guns, scout rifles. to do a little more damage. They're in, they're just bringing up also more damage. Auto rifles and pulse rifles, and then hand cannons. They're reducing the damage on that. So we'll see how this plays out. They also said they corrected an issue that was allowing the Vex Mythic class to benefit from the bonus damage for special ammo fusion rifles. So if Vex was particularly murdery, it's going to be a little less murdery. Oh, <laughs> man. Bit. Yeah, so so I I dutifully did what Night Demon said and put my neck into checkmate this morning, this, this lovely Saturday morning for about um, four or five matches uh, before, we, before we stopped to record. And uh, anyway, this is while Trials is up. And if this is the Destiny community that Destiny is trying to lure back, we can let them go. We can let them go to Call of Duty. We can send them away to somewhere else. I have not been teabagged so many times. I have not been, you know, not so. It really felt like <laughs> so they, D1. They really brought Call of Duty. It, it, it really felt like D1 old school Trials. Just the most toxic, the most terrible people oh, to play with every yeah. single match. Kind of sounds like Halo. You get killed and then you get tea bagged and then you go they go kill somebody else. Yeah, I, I mean truly it, 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 it's Halo it, and Call of Duty all over again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I mean truly it was just, you know, you know, the people and again, I was going, you know, with you know, not like you know the best greatest. I didn't like, you know, put together a full PvP loadout, but I was running loadout I was comfortable with and, and running with and I eventually put a sh- his hand cannon on because I'm going you just can't compete otherwise but I mean just I mean it, it felt like the bad old days of trials and we're just with the toxic element because I mean I can get killed over and over again again I, I have no illusions that I'm going to go in and like you know get kill streaks and murder people and wipe the floor with anybody I have zero illusions of this but the toxic nonsense like the only thing I didn't get was hateful messages, like which which I kind of feel like if I had played a little longer, somebody would have sent me, you know, trash. Why are you here? But it just, <laughs> I, uh, I mean, the game, I mean, I mean, I will say every game was close. Like every single match was close because it's checkmate control, which again, nobody plays control. Absolutely zero buddy, zero people controlled anything. I think me and like one other guy who clearly you know stumbled in here because we didn't have flawless, unbroken, you know, tri- full trials gear on. We're actually trying to capture zones. Everybody else, no, absolutely not. It's like we'll capture a zone or two and then just sit here and snipe you every time you try to get near. And by snipe, I just mean shoot you with a hand. <laughs> like it, it was. I mean, again, now granted, this is a sample size of like three or four games on a Saturday morning. It was not a good experience at all. 
I mean, I wasn't really expecting it to be a good experience, but I wasn't quite expecting it, expecting it to be as toxic as it was. Lol. So yeah, I'm... It, it's something I'll continue to try, at least. At least to see, just, you know, again, how the gunplay feels, especially once this tuning patch goes through. Because, yeah, I mean, everybody was running around with their adept hand cannons. That's basically, except for the one guy with the Yotun. I see you. I appreciate you. Good job, sir. And the thing about hand cannons is, is so they do, you do require a level of skill to use them, right? It's not like a machine gun where you go, brrr, ah. And you strafe across and some of your rounds are going to hit. No. If you miss a shot, then you have to wait a set amount of time before you can fire that gun again, right? And, you know, it, especially if they're going back and forth while teabagging while they do it, th that's all kinds of motion you have to try to keep up with to land this one shot, right? So some people are good at it. Other people are not. So Parody's like he had to put on a hand cannon just to keep up with everybody. But just because you have the hand cannon like everybody else does, does not mean you have the same level of skill as everybody else. You know what I mean? So, I mean, that's the that's the, that's another thing I I really dislike about the hand cannons. It's it's whoever gets that first shot off and has the better aim, right? I mean, that's ignorant because obviously everything is like that. But it's more so with hand cannons because like with a submachine gun or an auto rifle, I think you stand more of a chance, even if maybe they get the jump on you. But if they get to jump on you with a hand cannon, boom, like half your health has gone immediately with that first shot, you know? So you're not going to win that. you just not, you know? So that's that's why I hate hand cannons. Hand cannons have been a menace since they came into existence because they have the range of a scout rifle, damn near the damage of a shotgun. You know, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but they have way more damage than they should. And... You know, there's also a skill gap in how to use these particular weapons. Those that are good at hand cannons, they dominate, you know? And look, as a hunter, everyone's like, well, you're a hunter. Why don't you use hand cannons? Well, because I don't like them. I think they suck. The archetype is stupid, right? I like I like scout rifles, honestly, and I like auto rifles. That That's that's my perk pool, right? That scouts and autos. Pulse rifles are meh, you know? But scouts and auto rifles, that's my jam. Right, so things like a hand cannon, where if I miss that first shot and he lands his, it's game over. I'm not about that, you know. So that's my two yeah. cents. So I mean, after yeah. you after you picked up the hand cannon, period, did you see a vast improvement in your gameplay? I, I honestly, I kind of did because I was just landing more shots and doing mm -hmm. more damage, and even if I wasn't getting the kill, my teammates were helping to clean them again. You know, I mean, and, I mean. It, we were sort of running around in groups partially just because you sort of, I mean, everyone is sort of team shooting to a degree. So if you're caught alone, you're, you're just going to die because you're going to get hit from all these angles and you're done for. Oh, sure. So, I, mean, I, I mean, I've got a survivor's epitaph that I threw on that I that I sort of, I mean, again, and survivor's epitaphs are going to go, oh my God, why are you using that? Because it's a 180 and I'm an old man and it feels good in my hands and holds 16 oh. pounds. <laughs> so I'm like, I mean, that's the one I feel like I can use. You know, it's sort of like that malfeasance archetype. Um. Yeah. And then I sort of went between, I have an Aisha's Embrace scout rifle um, that I got from, you know, again, just grinding my face off in trials randomly, and a yesteryear pulse rifle, both of which are, are, are weapons I enjoy and I'm comfortable with. I had better luck with that, but again, like, you can't really, I mean, some of it was just the map selection. So, you know, none of the maps were really long enough to have those long sight lines to be able to engage with a scout or a pulse rifle without also being close enough for the guy with the SMG or the guy with the hand cannon to come in and just, or, or just, you know, hand cannon melee wipe you up. So, I mean, I think some of it is just, you know, I do want to play it more just to have a bigger sample size to experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious when these changes go into effect, if that, if that sort of changes what people are using or if it's, I mean, again, people, you know, I know going to this again, I am not the best player. I am not a good player. I am not someone who's going to have success here, but, uh, but, but again, like every single game I did play was very close. You know, I think I think I won one or two of them and then lost you know, three or four or whatever it was. But every single game was very close, like within a couple of points. So it wasn't like, you know, you're going in and you're just getting blown out. You're going in, and you're just getting wiped the floor again in my very limited experience with this. So curious to see how it goes. But yeah, but just not a, you know, it, it goes back to the problem of, oh, you know, the PvP community is dying. You won't do anything for us. Well, you step foot into the PvP community and this is what you get. And you're and, and you're gonna say 
I will never do this again. I will never step foot into another match. It, it, you know, it's one thing if I'm going to do poorly. It's another thing if I'm going to do poorly and deal with this toxic BS that everyone's pulling. So, mm. I mean, PVP community, if you want to exist, you have to at some point, you know, welcome new people in or you're going to get what you're going to get because the rest of us aren't ever coming That's back. That's it. They want new people to come in, right? That Right. Y- y- they want new people to come in so they can curb stomp them and teabag them. You if know? you want fresh lambs for the slaughter, eventually you're going to run out of lambs. Yeah, well, you know, they don't realize that. <laughs> And eventually they're gonna they're gonna hit that wall like YouTube was used to in the past. Oh, I keep coming across the same players because they're the only ones in my bracket. Well, yeah, <laughs> everyone mm-hmm. else you kicked out, dude. What do you, what do you expect? You know, you, I mean, you want people to come back and be perpetually abused by you? No, they're gonna leave, and you're gonna be stuck with people with your same skill level. Boo hoo, you know. But yeah, so you were talking about like one uh one eighty hand cannons. The few times that I use a hand cannon, I have the posterity from uh. The space raid. I can't remember the name of it, but the one where you're in space jumping across the the space station. Uh, the name of the hand mm-hmm. cannon is Posterity, and I use that one because, like you said, it's a 180, right? But I have one with Rampage and Reconstruction, so having a 30 round magazine was kind of fun on a hand cannon, even though I couldn't really land any of the shots. <laughs> had a big magazine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I have a lot of bullets. I I'm going to need them. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me put them over here. Yeah, there's there's a couple of people I ran who are like running like, you know, the old Sterling that um strand auto rifle, a couple of, you know, Amit AR2s, I mean, still still good even in their non-glitch format, still good. Mm-hmm. So again, you know, I want to go in and just, you know, experiment with the weapons a little bit more too and again, just to see see how the weapons feel when I'm not just getting teabagged by the same guy over and over and over again. I mean, and of course, in general, it, like, it's always one time, guy. Amalon auto rifles have generally been pretty good. You know? I mean, most seasons, Amalon auto rifles are part of the meta. You know, this time it's the Amit. Before it was the uh, the Void one. I can't remember what that one was called, you know? Uh, so, uh, not Soros. Amalon makes really good auto rifles and really good scout rifles too, man. Like, Damn. <laughs> and then you have the vice with a full auto fast firing scout rifle that's damn near an auto rifle, you know. So buy your stock yeah, on I mean, Huh? Put your stock on Amalon. Honestly, I would. Like if if Amalon was a thing, I would I would buy an Amalon weapon IRL. For real. You know? Because in okay. game the the is pretty good. They're 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 450s are really good. The very few 720s they have are really good. I mean do they have 720s? No, that's Viced, right? That's almost exclusively Viced. Whatever. Amalon's still pretty good. So, not a bad call. And the video that Demon sent us about um, this will change the way you play Destiny or whatever the hell it was called, right? Like, he was talking about, oh, and recently, recently being the key word, uh, it was one of the best used weapons in Trials. I'm like... Is that because people were turning it into a shotgun with infinite ammo? That might have something to do with it. Oh. <laughs> yes, 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 like, but, yes, but, but all, I mean, the ammo is, is still just a very good weapon. This this week in Trials, it's number three in kills yeah. for the week. So, I mean, I mean, again, in a normal week, you know, it's Igneous Hammer Adept at number one, Conditional Finality number two, and Amit AR2 number three. So, I mean, uh-huh. yeah, I mean, it, it's been a... It, it's had a good spot in the game and in PVP for a while. Yeah. The, the glitch weapon turning it into an absolute <laughs> abomination, notwithstanding. Yeah. I mean, it's been strong as it is. And, yeah. and again, and it's craftable. So you can, you can absolutely make the exact one you want and lean into those perks you put onto it. And you can get, uh, as you said, it's craftable. So not only can you get your God roll, you can get enhanced perks mm-hmm. on it, which makes it even better. And you you have the yourself, God roll, and then you have the God Slayer roll. Ha 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 You can make yourself a PvE one and a PvP one and just go, I've got them. They're ready to go. No matter what I'm doing, I can just r- grab them and go. The PvP one. PvP. Well, speaking of um, your buddies at Omelon, Gunsmith Focusing has entered the chat respawn. Gunsmith Focusing is here in the chat with us. Do you, do you see him? See him back I there in the corner? I was looking at that, yeah. Banshee, Banshee's sort of quiet, but he's he's back there in the chat. Do you want to tell us about uh about this this gunsmith focusing and uh what we're gonna be able to focus next? 
Sure, okay. So starting in Season 23, Banshee 44 uh, will offer focusing options for select boundary weapons. Gunsmith focusing is designed to offer players a way to chase after their dream role of older foundry weapons while reducing the ever-growing size of the legendary world pool. What weapons will be available? The select focusing options that Banshee 44 will offer for weapons are released from Season 16 up to Season 19, which means that these weapons are at least four seasonal releases old, i.e. one year. These weapons will no longer be obtainable from the legendary Engram World Drops and instead will only be available from Gunsmith, Engrams, and Focusing. Let me say that again. These weapons will no longer be obtainable as World Drops. You can only get them from Weapon Focusing at Banshee. Okay. Season 23 Gunsmith Pool and Focusing will have... And this is Suros weapons. You have the Kentala 57, which I believe is a hand cannon. Think of Patient 53, that's a pulse, I think. Yep, pulse uh, rifle. Pulse rifle, yeah. Fugui 55, no idea. Picado 46, I think that's an auto rifle. No, that's a uh, scout. No, P Pizza no? Cat's a submachine gun. No, 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 the one before that, Staccato. Staccato. Uh, yeah, sorry, Staccato is a scout rifle. Okay, yeah. Okay, but Kato uh, is, is a submachine gun, and Fioritura? Mm -hmm. 59. Sidearm. Sidearm. Uh, hockey weapons. So these tend to be your hard-hitting, slow-firing type of weapons, right? They have the Palmara B, which uh, is that the auto rifle? The Perseus D, I think, is a pulse rifle. Rocket launcher, Palmyra. Palmyra's rocket launcher, Perseus D is what? Perseus is the scout rifle. Scout. Ragnid D is the auto? Shotgun. Shotgun. Damn it. <laughs> I'm looking Enyo these up. I'm not, I'm not memorizing what, these. What, the, the sub? Uh, yep, submachine gun. Hey, <laughs> there's one. Uh, oh, no, this one, too. Uh, pulse. Oh, sir, sir, come on. The Boudicca C, your yeah. buddy and, and great admirer of the Boudicca C. Uh, what is it? Sidearm? Sidearm. Sidearm, okay, yeah. Um, and the Mr. Lob Roxy is definitely the auto very upset with you. There we go. <laughs> yeah, he's not playing this at me, but who cares? Uh, there you go. Weist. Now, Weist is, is what a lot of people know, the crate auto rifle, right? That's the um, stasis auto rifle that can come with, like, tomb, uh, headstone, not tombstone, headstone. Uh, just, I mean, it's got a great perk pool on that gun. So it's a very fast-firing auto rifle. It's amazing, and you should totally focus it. Funnel web, same thing. A great, great, great submachine gun. Even though it's been kind of nerfed, it's still really good. Kaipan 4FR was the meta DPS boss uh, linear fusion rifle for a long time. Uh, it's still not bad, actually. I say it was. It's still pretty good. It's not as good as the rockets, but it's still pretty good. Redback 5SI. I don't know what that one is. That's a scout rifle. That's a scout rifle? Okay. That nobody likes. Uh, that's yeah. probably why I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I don't know if you said it, the red the red back as well. Oh, oh sorry. I wait, just said that, yeah. Sorry, you said uh, red back. That's the sidearm. I'm sorry. I was I was trying to do too many things at once. Sorry, yeah, the red back the red back is the side is a pff, God, and words. the Lunulata is the hand cannon, yeah. right? Yeah, the red back is the sidearm. The Lunulata is the bow, I believe. Is it? Yeah, that's the combat bow. Okay, cool. From season 17. And Jarak... Jararaka. Jara, That's a scout rifle. J hold on a second. J-A-R-A-R-A-C-A. Jararaka. 3SR. Budgie, these names you have are very... It's Right. That one, I think you have to say in, in a in a pirate accent. I think that's the only proper way to pronounce it. I don't think it. I can say that in any accent. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm having a stroke when I try to say that. <laughs> like I don't know. Just <laughs> did I stick a fork in a socket? What I don't know. Um. So you got Amalon, right? Here we go. These are the Amalon weapons. Um, Amit AR2, obviously auto rifle. Uh, Snorri FR5 is a fusion rifle. Uh, Typhoon GL5 is a grenade launcher. 
Agma PR. Oh, the Typhon actually gets some pretty good rolls on it too. So don't sleep on that as a grenade launcher. Um, Agma PR6. That's a pulse rifle. I don't really hear a lot about that. I don't know anything about that. I had a beautiful um, roll on that before they change up how champions work. Oh yeah, mm. bad, bad day. Uh, <laughs> Galu RR3. That's the sniper rifle. Oh okay, fair enough. And the Arvandil, Arvandil FR6, that's another fusion rifle? Yeah, fusion rifle. Uh, so yep. you have the Snorri and the Arvandil. Which one of these is the linear? Uh, I think they're they're both just fusions. They're both yeah, fusions? They're, they're both oh, okay. fusions. Yeah, Snorri was a menace in the Crucible for a while, whatever mm -hmm. number of seasons back. Yeah, I, I just want a moment of silence for my Agma PR6 that has disruption break and adaptive munitions on it. Ooh. Back, back when that was really nice for dealing with champions and dealing with match shields and things. I mean, it still is. What's wrong with it? Well, well I mean, they changed how the shields work. So like the, the uh, disruption break thing isn't quite as nifty or adaptive munitions. I can't remember because I haven't used it in a while, but gotcha. when, when, when you had to like match the element to the shields, that was really nice for shield breaking of champions and nightfalls and things. Still good, but not as good as it absolutely was. One of those. Oh, you, you you sit at the top of my trophy case, and now you're just sort of in the in the cluttered, dusty collection <laughs> of all the other weapons. Uh, yeah, I've got a few crafted weapons. One of them being a scout rifle, the other one being an auto rifle that are that have that role that you just described specifically to use for champions. Yeah. So in season twenty four, we're planning to update this list with season twenty weapons. Uh, for existing foundries, as well as add a new category for field forged weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, Gunsmith focusing will also be replacing Banshee 44 six count weapon selection. Uh oh. The following weapons will be moved out of the world pool, which means you will not ever get these ever, 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 ever again. So That's don't delete them means. from your inventory. It's not what that means. Yeah, it is. The following weapons will be removed out of the Whirlpool. These will not be available from Gunsmith Ingrams or Focusing, but will instead be occasionally available from Xur. So, you know, never. Uh, contingency <laughs> plan. <laughs> I stand by what I said, damn it. Uh, contingency plan is what? Uh, that's a, a scout rifle. That's one of those fast firing scout rifles that Night Demon likes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Legal action two, the number. That's another one of the 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 guns that was really good for a long time, right there. Uh, memory interdict, Palladius corrector. That's what a hand cannon. Yeah, yeah memory is... memory interdict is the grenade launcher. The Palladius is yeah, scout rifle. Yeah. The decide, just the decide. Yep, and the vision, and yep. the stochastic variable. So yeah, decide is decidedly a shotgun. Stochastic. The vision is a sidearm, and the st 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 uh, the variable is a submachine gun that I can't say the name of. It looks like and stochastic. the number is the auto rifle. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, that one. Uh, somebody with a better vocabulary can tell us what it means one day. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, how will these weapons rotate? Well, I can tell you. Yeah, how will Banshee they? 44 will offer two foundries at a time, a.k.a. Soros and Hake. After each daily reset, one of these foundries will rotate out for another, effectively allowing each foundry to have the spotlight for two days in a row. Now, for Season 23, the rotation schedule looks like this. Day 1, Amalan and Soros. Day 2, Soros and Hake. Day 3, Hake and Weist. Day 4, Weist and Amalon. And then the cycle starts over again. This is subject to change as we add more foundries and future releases. Yo! Let's add all of the foundries! Yeah, what about Dead Orbit? Can we have Dead Orbit weapons back? They're, they're not a foundry, they're a faction. And, oh. and to get that faction, you'll have to rally, and that's just a whole other thing. But I'm, I was not say, objective. I'm not opposed to that either. Yeah, someone's got to take that right now and do something with it. That's right. You know, they've been in space for a while. I'm sure they found more weapons or have made more weapons by now. You could bring them back as as a foundry, have have, have dead orbit foundries. Yeah. 
yeah. future yeah, Warcore foundries if they still exist. And uh, New Monarchy was disbanded entirely, wasn't it? So those guys are SOL. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm sure there's some leadership out there somewhere that can they can bring the faction. <laughs> I mean, they are a faction after all. But yeah, I just but was, the faction was bunching... disbanded. Right. Well, I mean, I mean, disbanded is a strong word. There's, I mean, there, there, there's people out there somewhere plotting, you know, plotting in the darkness of space. I mean, come on, you, you, you've, you've seen enough space movies or enough space books and seen, seen spacing. Space is big. I mean, I mean, you can't for sure say there. You know, we've got rid of the entire empire. There's, there's some factions of the empire out there somewhere. Okay. Uh, for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, uh, Mellow Mally, for example, we used to have something in the game called factions. Right. You had Dead Orbit, which was basically space goth. You had Future War Cult, which was the Amalon ish type weapons, right? And then you had Future War Cult, which were the very regal looking things, right? So uh, Future War Cult uh, was more of the Warlock type of players. Um, Dead Orbit was absolutely the, the Hunters, <laughs> right? And then you had um, the Titans occupying a lot of the. Uh, Oh, uh, what was it again? Some sort of monarchy. New monarchy, yeah, new monarchy. Yeah, it was, was a, where a lot of the titans. Not an old one. Out. I'm trying to remember what it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I mean, it, it was like it was cool because you'd have these faction wars where, oh god, I miss them now that I'm talking about them again. So you you'd have these faction wars, and what would happen is everybody would jump in the game and start doing these activities to get more and more faction tokens, and then you would turn these tokens in for armor that was specific to your found, not your foundry, your um, faction. Faction, right? And weapons that were specific to your faction. And then Bungie took it a step further by offering one unique weapon for whomever won the little faction rally for that period, right? And if your faction won, then you would get, everybody would get access to this weapon. You would get it for free or a really, really reduced cost. I can't remember. And everyone else could technically still get it, but they'd have to pay like a ton of glimmer to get it or something like that, right? So, I mean, it was a whole thing. And you you had the, you know, dead orbit for life. And you had, I mean, it was it was just another way of segregating people. It was, it was, it was fun and it was amusing. But the fact that they all had different weapons and their own customized armor and their own styles, it's it was it was it was fun. And honestly, I think the the dead orbit armor was always some of the best looking armor. Back in the day, but you know that's just me. Um, now, how much will they cost for focusing? Here's where it gets expensive. Gunsmith focusing will co- Gunsmith focusing costs will be partly. Oh, I'm having a stroke. Uh, Gunsmith focusing costs will be in partly parity. Wow, the other parity, the word parity, not the person parity. With how much focusing ritual weapons cost, I just slaughtered that whole thing. I am I am not good today. Anyway, it's going to cost three gunsmith ingrams and five thousand glimmer. Now it doesn't sound like much glimmer, but the ingrams are going to add up quick, especially since it still hasn't been quite debunked that you can't hold more than ninety nine ingrams at a time. Uh, we have some experts looking into that. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, but we're going to find out how many ingrams you can hold maximum, and then uh, three three is expensive. Five, for some of the other things, are definitely expensive, but, you know, I miss the day where it was, you know, you had one, you focused it. You had one, you focused it. Next program, okay. Uh, now, how can I get gunsmith ingrams? We're aware that... We're aware that ranking up Gunsmith <laughs> reputation alone is not the ideal way to earn Gunsmith Engrams, you think? We have been taking that into account and have decided to include more ways to obtain Gunsmith Engrams. A. Ranking up Gunsmith reputation. That takes forever. B. Lost sector completions. That's uh, much better. Normal no. gives you a 20% chance. Legend Solo and Platinum gives you 40%, and Master Solo and Platinum give you 60%, and the chests that are just kind of everywhere in the open world give you a 20% chance to get one. So, 1 in 5 chests should give you a Gunsmith Ingram. You just have to oh, spend yeah, 4 hours to find the damn chest. They're absolutely going to buff those drop rates for the, for the harder... Lo- 
wall sectors. Yeah, I mean, for, for solo and platinum, it only gives you 40%? Come on. But maybe that's taken away from the Engram. I don't know if we want that higher, right? If that becomes higher, then maybe you won't get the exotic Engram you're trying to hunt for, huh? Yeah. Then hopefully, uh, they can, hopefully they can drop together. Real quick, Mr. Blue Screen, in your yeah. Engram tracker, either in Dim or in the game, do you have anything that's over 99? We've been trying to play the... Oh. We, we know it's... We, you know, you know, we all collectively remember, or at least collectively are having delusions of like the War Table having over 99. The sonar station. Yeah, war table just... stuck. War table stuck at ninety nine. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because I, I know I saw a message from Noble this week about his sonar station is stuck at ninety nine and will not go any higher. But I swear I have seen it. I have seen like the war table, like last season, like in game being over a hundred. And I haven't. Well, it might have been in the past. They might have mind. capped it since then, though, parody. Well, well, you know? well right, right. Yeah, well, yeah. That's what we're trying to figure out this season. Is there a cap? So if you have something sitting over a hundred, you know, over ninety nine. Let us know. We're curious whether it's I've in the game or whichever. Up, yeah. Sorry, didn't mean to talk over you. I've definitely no, been stuck in the sonar station, though. I know that that it was at ninety nine for a while, and then I went in and burned a bunch of them, and it's back up to eighty one again. So I've got wow. I've got all of the patterns for the sonar station, the I mean, ritual table. I mean, the sonar station still doesn't have bounties, though. Doesn't isn't that still broken? It's as far as I know, with the ritual table, I got all those patterns. It's just embarrassing, honestly. I still don't even know how this whole thing works. Like periodically, I'll go in and it'll have things that with a check mark when I click it, and I click it again, and I get a thing, and it marks it off. Right? I don't know how I'm completing them. I don't know. This this whole season's got me bollywopped, and I'm not. I'm not with it. I'm not about it. I'm not about it. The season, dude. Ever since the raid came out, I've been I've been depressed. About destiny, the season. Although, so you're saying you haven't been setting up for lore for the for the great uh, lore ritual. This is a punishment event that's coming. Absolutely not. I'm not going to cheat. I'm going to go in with the knowledge I have, which is <laughs> not quite zero, but you know, almost zero. I would. I'm almost at zero. I would dare say that of the three of us, you probably have the most. Ninety minutes second, and I am a distant third. Now I would normally yeah. agree with that, but Night Demon's been been catching me out on some things, so well, he, well, might, uh, he might actually be first. Well, that's what I was gonna say. I, I was I'm gonna temper that statement with saying, you know, you much like me. Do you know it? Yes. Can you recall it in the moment? No. Eh, that goes without <laughs> saying. Yeah. I I sound competent because I have the power of the internet to look things up, like all those foundry <laughs> weapons. I don't remember what half of those are. Mm-hmm. But I have the internet, and I can go, I can find this information. I don't need to remember if I can look it up. If if you're expecting me to find things in the moment, yeah, no, that's, that's like we said, we're going to need to have less than zero, because we're going to get there. It's important. The fact that you said, oh, you can't go below zero, I'm like, bruh, that is, that is failed. We're going to no, die no. at zero. <laughs> no, that kind of attitude, it's sir. Lucky, you know? <laughs> <sighs> You gotta implement a negative system, otherwise it's not gonna be a winner. <laughs> the winner was the friends we made along the way. Uh, yeah, but no, I mean he hangs out with, or at least he talks to you know our Lord Scribe a lot more than I do. So he might just passively have more Lord knowledge than than I do at this point. You know, yeah. it'll be exciting to find yeah. out sometime in the future. Stay tuned for some um, coherent like, level of details coming at some point. But you know, you know, we do have details on though. If you've been paying attention, is we have lots of details when it comes to the player support report. Do we now? We do. Have we fallen right into fall? No, um, I'll I'll show myself out. So yeah, so the sonar station still broken, still no bounties, which they may not tell us about, but but we know this to be true. Uh, Error codes. Yep, error codes. There were there were lots of error codes. They were investigating. Theoretically, they've they've solved the error code thing because between Thursday and today, they were like, "Hey, we think we got it." Uh, hopefully, that's the case. Like I said, our limited experience today, no error codes. Things worked well. Um, if you're still waiting for your Crota's emblem for your raid mode, uh, challenge mode, Why? raid completion, uh, keep waiting. You'll get there eventually. I promise. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, again, you know, they are working on it. it. It is a thing they are going to happen. They're just, you know, it's probably not the top priority at the moment. Uh, other known issues that you know we know to be true, maybe you know them to be true. Players can sometimes become soft locked during the bladed path 
by progressing through different steps of the quest at the same time. Ooh. They thought that that was fixed. Mm. Mm. Tricky, tricky. Like, yeah. they, didn't they specifically mention that as one of the fixes last week? Uh, you know, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But, you know, yeah, maybe maybe they fixed it in one way and then, you know, broke it another way, a la weapon crafting. <laughs> Uh, your path of the burning steps, Titan exotic, and associated ornaments uh, no longer change the appearance when your solar weapon boost perk is active. So, looks the same. Uh, Hoarfrosty and Icefall Mantle, Titan exotics, still broken using the incorrect cooldowns. Which must be longer cooldowns if they haven't fixed or disabled them by now. When inspecting your weapon details for items stored in your vault, the weapon perks icons uh, may no longer appear. Who needs them? You know, Perry, you just, you just said something that guess. was pretty impactful that I don't even mm -hmm. think you realize, right? So you said it must be that the wait times are longer than what they should be. Otherwise, they'd have fixed it. Mm -hmm. It goes back to the whole... Or disabled them. Yeah, or disabled them. It goes back to the whole, if it's broken in a way that negatively affects us, exactly. they'll take That's the what time. Said, yeah. But it's broke. Mm -hmm. if it's broken in a way that positively affects us, they fix it immediately. And that, I think, <laughs> every time I hear something like that happen, it irks the hell out of me. That Bungie does things like that, you know? They prioritize things that we enjoy and leave things alone for longer than what they should for things we don't enjoy. There are, of course, are exceptions to the rule, right? There are some breaks that they fix immediately because it's game-breaking in a bad way, right? But far, you know, far more times do they address the fun perks or the beneficial, not perks, glitches, or the beneficial glitches over the negatively impacting ones, you know? I, I've made callbacks to raids that have been out for years that still have bugs in them that still affect us to this day that they've never fixed. But yet, you know, an Ammit that can shoot shotgun shells they fix in a couple of days. I mean, yes, it's game-breaking. There's no no arguing that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's just an example. There have been other things that have been less, far more subtle, but still beneficial, like, you know, infinite legendary shards. Who cares if, why does Bungie care if you have infinite legendary shards? There's limited things you can buy with them, and the things you can buy with them, you're limited to how many you can buy per week, right? So you're not breaking the economy by having infinite legendary shards, but it's fixed in 24 hours, you know? It's, why? Why? Sorry, man, I just, just every, every time I hear a statement like that, it just, it bugs me that they do that so much, man. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some players who didn't fully complete the Seas of the Deep story missions may be blocked from completing the current Seas of the Witch story missions until you finish the previous Seas of story. Ugly. Yeah, that's, that's been like ugly. that for a few weeks, though. Yeah, yeah. a lot of these are things that have just been an ongoing. Returning players who didn't fully complete Guardian Rises quest prior to Lightfall can't learn the Learning Light quest. You know, still there. And uh, multiple Ooh, pieces the of armor. Oh, the camera learning light. That's <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah. That's been like that for a couple of weeks too. This is the second or third time I've seen this. You know, See, again, in the, in the negatively blog. impacting. Three weeks mm -hmm. now. Two, three weeks and counting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's all good. Multiple pieces of armor of arm armor can cause obstructions when aiming down sights in your Tessellation exotic fusion rifles. Just don't pre-order it. Problem solved. Then you don't have to worry about it. And yeah, that, that was the list of issues. Yeah, really, it's just a lot of things that are ongoing. Like, hey, wrong. you know, prerequisites. Nope. You know, there's a whole lot of you need to complete last season. You know, last year's objectives to move into this grade. And uh, if you didn't, well, you know, come in and play with your friends anytime. Only you can't because they you didn't do the thing last. Uh, you know, we tried. Right. <sighs> and yeah, no that, or if you or, is it still okay? Is it still? Broken to the fact yes. where you can pre-order it and then you get a refund and still keep all the pre-order stuff. Is that still a thing? I don't know. I've I've no yet to pre-order anything yet, so don't know. Yeah. You'll have to try and uh, find out. I don't want to. I just I heard a lot of people that have done that. Yeah, and then uh, we've got okay. movies of the week and art of the week and really just just one of each. So either it was a light week or they're just like, um, we're just going to feature the Jumpmaster one and uh, feature you know a crafting comic and. That's it. You get one one movie, one art. That's it. That's all Sam has for you. She's like, yeah, that's it. We're done. So and, that was the, you know, and that was the thing. In the movie of the week, who is this person in the warm husk crown? Who is that? Because uh, there's a, if you guys haven't seen it, there's like a little comic strip. Somebody drew it. It's, it's basically a parent schooling their children, right? 
but it's it's a hunter in a worm husk crown, and they're like, so, who broke it? And then they're like, I'm not mad. I just want to know, like every other parent, you know, try to trap their kids into admitting it before they beat them senselessly, right? Uh, <laughs> um, and everyone's looking all guilty, and then Ikora goes, "I did it. I broke it." Because you know, Ikora, you know, she's she's gonna do the noble thing and just you know, get it over with. Like, I'll take the punishment. Just let's get it over with, right? And then uh, the character immediately says, "No, no, you didn't, Drifter." He says, don't look at me, look at Zavala. And Zavala's like, what? I didn't break it. And then the drifter goes, huh, that's weird. But like, I mean, it, it's funny because it's like parents holding their children or whatever, but like, is that supposed to be us in the Wormhouse crown? Like, is that our character? And what was broken? Because the first screenshot doesn't show what was broken. Like, is was it the rock on the table? Did somebody break... Um, did somebody break a rock? Did somebody break Kate's map? I mean, what's broken? Tell me, I will, man! I will tell you, if you click through to the link they have above, there are three panels of this comic, and your an your questions may be answered. Oh, are they? It may not be answered. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But if you click through, there are, there are multiple panels that continue uh, the story. I'm not saying your answer will be there, but I'm saying at least you'll have the full story that way. And that oh, was such a good okay, okay. Yep, I see it now. Now, now Mr. Mr. Demon, who who is not here with us this week, did send a couple of videos for you to watch. Because he, he was worried that you wouldn't get your fix. You wouldn't have your Destiny fix of videos this week if he didn't send you something. So some kind of homework mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have from Truds, 15 builds that will change the way you play Destiny 2 forever. So, That's misleading, though. Forever. Right? He says forever. Is it though? No, have, not, have, not the forever have, part. The, the have you spent the forty-five minutes watching the way you destiny? It's it's like a it's like an hour-long video almost, like for, like like fifty minutes, right? And, and it, yeah, it is a non non deacon approved forty-six minutes long. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, which, oh, which I mean, fifteen builds in forty-five minutes. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good build per minute ratio. That's the thing. It's not builds though. That's what made me mad because I was I looked forward to it. I was watching it, and there's no actual builds. The first half is him talking about exotics that suck. They look good on paper but actually suck. And the second half is exotics that work, but he doesn't actually give any builds. You so know, he, he, he is not going to plunder anything. He is just going to say, here's what you no. should do. No, I mean, I was, I was <laughs> looking forward to some builds, maybe plunder the booty hadn't come up with. Right. But no, there's no builds. He just, he just talks about all the exotics, you know, what they can do, why they suck, why they're good, etc. And he hates the old keeper gauntlets for some reason i just because they don't work with all exotics which is dumb but they're still good otherwise you know but yeah so if if you want to if you want to learn what the exotics do cool you can watch the video you can also watch fallout to tell you the same thing but to say 15 builds that that'll change how you play destiny forever very misleading that's not what the video is about i'm shocked i'm shocked that they would use clickbait so, so, so you're telling me he, he's going to give me information that then I have to do the work? Yeah. There's, there's no uh, actual builds mm. in there, right? When I think of a build, it gives you the exotic. He gives you the, um, the, 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 the subclass. He gives you the perks to use on the subclass. And if necessary, the seasonal artifact perks, right? And what um, mods you need to put on each piece of armor to make it work. And if you need an exotic weapon to, to synergize the whole thing. Wins. Uh, I'm not happy about that. I, I am not here to think. I'm here to be told what to do. Thank I you. Have people for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So maybe, maybe, maybe Shadow Destiny. Maybe Shadow Destiny will tell me what to do. He said there are 80 ways that I might be playing Destiny 2 wrong. Now, there's yeah. apparently 80 ways stuffed into a sleek 19 and a half minutes. So wow. I'm going to I'm gonna have to watch this and see because that's a You'll lot say. of ways I could be playing wrong. I mean, and I'm sure I'm bad playing, enough about the way I play. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I'm playing like at least 73 of those 80 wrong, like just off the bat. Like that just yeah. that feels right to me. He shows a hunter saying, stop doing this. And he's pointing at the discipline. So for hunters out there, we don't have to spec into um, melee at all on any build. Because every one of our subclasses gives us a dodge to instantly get a melee back. So if you spec into melee, you're wrong off the bat. 
right? Uh, that has to do with discipline. What? Uh, well, I'm I'm getting to that, right? And okay. then and then uh, mobility is what we used to have to spec into, and it's still good to spec into it, but we have so many ways to circumvent mobility cool mobility cooldowns that we that's kind of a throwaway class now, right? Or a throwaway. Uh, yeah, hunter is a throwaway class. You're right. Continue. Shut up. Shut up. Uh, throwaway <laughs> stat. There we go. Throwaway stat. Right. So the only thing we need to spec into on a hunter is resilience. You have to spec into that nowadays, and discipline, so we can get our nades back. Because the grenade is one of the few things that we don't necessarily have. You know, a very reliable way to get the grenade back. Should we have some things that give us two grenades? And we have like one or two exotics that if the grenade hits or kills the thing, it gives us some energy back, but it's not it's not a lot, right? So we don't have a really reliable way to spec into discipline like we do uh mobility and strength, right? So when he's showing this arrow pointing at a low number for discipline, you know, he's saying, Stop doing this. Spec more into discipline because this is the one stat that you you need to spec into on a hunter. So resilience, discipline. Mobility, if you can, and then whatever stats you have left over, dump into recovery, right? So that's the best way to build a hunter the last few seasons. I don't know anything about Titans or Warlocks, but whatever. Yeah, so... All three classes. Yeah. Resilience yeah. is important, and discipline is important. Mm-hmm. Yep. So recovery, if you're not guys. having... Yeah, recovery, you can sort of play with if you have a way... If you have a way to basically get get your health up quickly, recovery is less important. If you don't have a way to get your health up, recovery might be a little more important. Kind of or depends if you're on your warlock and your subclass. Literally depends on recovery. <laughs> and yeah, no. as we've learned about how to make spiky armor, you know, having two stats. Like if you wanted to have resilience and mobility, it was really mm -hmm. hard to build a set where you could get two spikes in the same half of your stats. So. Oh, you could very easily get spikes and discipline and resilience. Very easily. Right. That's yeah. that's easy. M mobility and resilience, much different. Mm -hmm. You're never going to get a spike from both of those. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, so there you go. Eight, uh, 80 ways in 19 minutes. That should be a fun video to watch. What's the next one? Sneaky Beaver! Greatest then, name ever! Can you be my friend? Response favorite Sneaky Beaver has the easy, precarious balance master challenge guide for Crota's raid, Crota's end raid in Destiny Two. So the easy way to do it, and that's a you know. that, that's a mere ten minutes. So <laughs> ten minutes, he will tell you the easy way to precariously balance and become masters. <laughs> Hold on, easy. you see how it's got three Dawn Blades and three Titans, <laughs> no hunters. <laughs> I, well, well, I mean, to be fair, he does say, you know, the first comment is this strategy is dummy proof in all caps. So, I mean, if we just eliminate the dummies, there you go. Problem solved. Oh, wow. We have three dummies. There's Titans right there. I can see them. Yeah. Yeah, but those it's dummies have been proved. Left amongst them. Those, those, those <laughs> Titans have been proved. Those are battle hardened Titans. We know they're going to do something stupid. They're strand there's, Titans. What are you there's, talking there's about? No question. Yeah, there's no question about the stupidity there. Come on. Uh -huh. <laughs> we, we have all the banners we've gone to war life is good yeah but no honestly speaking though those banners are so broken dude that's awesome Damn. i love it you, you mean perfect because i don't have to worry about any stats i just say i'm gonna punch it. you and you're gonna be unhappy after that or i'm gonna sword you or whatever man yeah just yeah. just just punch know? them why, why make it more difficult just just punch people you know, I'm, punch, I'm giving you Titans punch credit, and, dude. Punch when, and stand. When, when you guys have a banner and I'm doing a raid, yo, I'm just chilling. Mm -hmm. just chilling yeah, dude. stick with that guy. It's yeah, it's good yeah. for you too. Just gotta hang out. Come yeah. hang, man. Yeah, yeah just, just Mike, hang, Mike hang stands the, ahead of me with, with the green. thing. I stand behind him, shooting over his shoulder. It's amazing. <laughs> ba bask in the beautiful green glow. That's all you need to yeah. do. I, can, I still and, can't believe how much and how fast it heals you. It gives you. The same amount of health as the Worm Husk Crown does every second. Every second. Damn. It is That's perfect, crazy. and we and we never need to even think about it ever again. And then yep, end of conversation. Moving on. No, 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 no. Everybody who's <laughs> no, in no. that circle, not no, no. just the Titan. We don't need to talk about it anymore. No, no, no. Not just the Titan can extend the length of it. Anybody standing in his circle that gets a kill extends the length. 
W T and F. Yeah, I mean, I mean, defeating a target with melee attack, finisher, or sword. You can raise your banner of war that pulses with energy, periodically oh, healing cool. all nearby allies and increasing melee and sword damage. Targets to be defeated mm-hmm. by you or your nearby allies charge the banner, increasing the mm-hmm. speed of its pulses. Mm-hmm. And still, it's, I can't get the blueberry okay. hunters to stick around. They all just run off and die. <laughs> right, well, right. They're like, blueberries, like you said. They don't know. They don't know. Yeah. They just don't know. They, they, don't, know? they don't know about our Lord and Savior, the healing green pulses of life. Salty, what does anybody know what Salty means? Salted Grepo, what does he mean? I don't. I don't know. Uh, people are saying that he wants it nerfed for some reason. Like in, in PvP, I don't know how it works in PvP. Well, it well, might be a medicine uh, PvP. But in PvE, uh, I don't want them really. to touch it. Leave it alone. Yeah, I mean, I mean, PvP, it's not, I mean, again, you have, to, you have to get close quarters kills for it to activate. And even then, it's. Uh, so a Titan I, I, has to get a melee kill in PvP? That's unheard of. Well, well. Uh, well, I mean, depending on what PvP you're playing. In in checkmate, it's going to take you three full blows with yeah. six steps to get a kill. So, I mean, depending where you're playing it. Okay. Anyway, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's you've got better options is all I'm saying. Uh, so those are the three videos Night Demon sent. I have neglectfully watched nothing on YouTube this week. Uh, I did see one post that Cheese Forever posted four days ago. Who just who, who? Which is a text post, which honestly I forget YouTube does because everything is basically new Twitter these days. And he says, I was doing generic armor focusing because I was capped at 99 engrams and finally hit a perfect roll. Max 68 stats with two spikes. Perfectly oh balanced as all things should be. So this man has a uh, Tekken's Regalia Greaves leg armor with spikes in recovery and discipline that are both 30. So, wow. so, so I'm going to guess, and we'll, you know, we'll put this link in the show wow. notes as well. I'm going to guess, you know, because you know, we had the question two weeks, three weeks ago, you know, sort of, you know, what's sort of like the best roll you could get or the best splits you can get on a legendary piece of armor. So it's got 30 in those two stats and then twos and everything else for a total of 68. So I'm thinking that's about as good as you can do. That's it. That is it. That, yeah. I think at that point you just turn your turn the Xbox off and step away. You're done. You've beaten the game. Yeah, you beat Destiny. You're there's good. there's nothing more you can do at that point. That that is that is perfection. That is a thing of beauty. The the only way he can make this no well that's not true. He could also get two more pieces of armor with those spikes in it, right? So have ninety from two pieces of armor. Uh mm, sorry, three pieces, three pieces of, armor. of armor. And then for the last two pieces of armor, he can have sixty sixty, right? And then put on mods that give you plus thirty. So he could have five raid boss. It just says raid boss at that point. Five stats at ninety. Mm-hmm. Don't forget the free points for without Master mods, <laughs> guys. This is without mods. Okay, so so base armor five five pieces for a total of ninety in all the stats. Right okay. now. With mods, but it took cheese forever. Cheese forever. Who gets Ooh. goes through so many more materials than you or I will? It <laughs> took him how many years of destiny to get that role? <laughs> well, we don't Seven know how years. long he's been target farming, though. And, right? and, 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 how, and how many engrams? <laughs> more yeah. That guy mid maxes how much cereal and milk he puts into his bowl. <laughs> he's been doing it the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I don't that, doubt that. I can see no, him. I can see him putting his milk and cereal on a scale. <laughs> <laughs> and actually he's got a video the stereo ratio was perfect <laughs> yeah, you yeah, get so the one piece list that goes with our our uh our multiples videos yeah everybody's mm-hmm. doing the 80s this and 30 he does the 30 glitches for attacking the witch in the raid through the wall and, uh, and so he does all of the different ways you can damage the witches without having the att- uh, attunement that's the uh-huh. three glitches, also including Telesto video. That's the one, yeah. Beautiful. We'll add that to the show notes as well. Yeah. So, uh, and that is a you know, not that Deacon would ever approve of Destiny Two, but it's eight minutes and fifty four seconds. So I mean, it's it's getting it's getting closer to yeah. approval. So so eight we're moving forward to show you thirty ways to kill a boss that you don't even have to fight. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna have you do and watch this week. I'm sure there's many uh-huh. other things you know. You found good things this week to, to to go and do and watch, and and respawn has has enough 
blah, 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 has a lovely email to read from you from, you know, longtime emailer Mel O'Malley. Mm-hmm. I have a very short email to read from Calvin, who was last week looking for a clan, and the Fallen Guardians reached out and said, I've been invited and joined and would like to thank them. So I don't, I wish I knew who the Fallen Guardians clan was. Was that the one that Donnie? I don't know. I've, 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 I've saw, suggested for him, yeah. I saw, yeah. I saw a message somewhere and I saw someone else reach out saying, hey, they can join our clan, but I don't remember who it was and who was them. So yeah, so thank you to the Fallen Guardians. And if you're looking for a clan, you too can join the Fallen Guardians because I'm sure they would like more lovely human beings. So yeah, so Calvin has a, has a lovely group of people to run with. And uh, Mel O'Malley has some, some Ascendant Alloy. Feedback, story time, some things. Mm-hmm. What do we got, Respawn? All right. Well, like you said, it's from Mel O'Malley. She says, hi, guys. I am a bit behind on listening to your awesome podcast because we drove our youngest daughter from Southern California to Eugene, Oregon to live there. That's a 2,000 mile round trip, 32 hours of driving. Just got back to work and I'm catching up with the stuff. Well, first of all, first of all, during a long drive is the best time to listen to the podcast and to expose your loved ones to the podcast. They can't run away, right? You should have 100% been listening to our podcast while you were on this drive. That's all I'm saying. They can't run away, but my wife can leave me at the gas station. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Just got back to work and I'm catching up with the stuff. I'm listening to episode 243. When you're talking about materials and how it's going to be different in season 23 in regard to legendary shards, etc., you may talk about this more later, but I thought I would shoot over a quick email while I'm thinking about it. I, too, have an ample amount of legendary shards, close to 12,000. Good Lord! Ample. Wrong word, sir. Right? You've been playing less time than I've been playing on my Titan, and you've got 12,000 shards? That's nutty. Get you must have exploded a bug or something like that. Anyway, uh, the bane of my existence in Destiny at the moment is Ascendant Alloys. I wish these would be more accessible, even for purchasing. Raul only sells one per week. Why only one? You need at least two Ascendant Alloys to reshape a weapon with enhanced perks. I've looked online on how to get Ascendant Alloys besides the one per week limit from Raul. You can rank up with Banshee at rank 16, or complete Master Wealth Spring or Master Weekly Missions for a chance, not even guaranteed, or a drop, but that's about it. As a new-ish player, I find that Ascendant Alloys are probably the hardest thing to obtain. Even harder than Golf Balls. Agreed. Uh, I have so many weapons that I want to reshape, but I'm stuck without the Ascendant Alloys, unless I can do some Master Level activities. Sigh. Just venting. I guess I need to get busy with doing some Master Wall Springs. Ugh. Well, it shouldn't be too hard. You have two men in your house that play Destiny, right? So there's your fire team right there. Um, and if not, you can always reach out to us at Two Titans and 100 Discord or uh, our LFG at the 100.io to put a team together to do Master Level content. So you got options. Um, in regard to the recent crafting glitch that has now been patched, I spent a few hours playing with the glitch and giving some of my weapons illegal perks. I showed my frame rate and started, I'm sorry, slowed down my frame rate and started downloading lots of log trials and watching 4K videos at the same time, and it worked. A lot of fast mouse clicking, but a little bit, a lot of fast mouse clicking, but half the fun was when I finally when it finally worked, and I was placed into the glitch screen to add perks that didn't belong to the weapon. I love the reconstruction perk I have on my commemoration machine gun because it's amazing. I also added it to a few other machine guns, recurrent impact, plank stride, and fixed odds. Photos below. It was so nice to have reconstruction plus incandescent on my fixed odds. Yes, that does sound good. Oh, well, uh, they're all gone now, and the perks will be set, but it was fun while it lasted. That's it for now. I got to catch up on your podcast. And she's got a picture of these things that she was talking about. She's got a recurring impact with reconstruction and fire line. Firing line. Uh, you do have the rapid fire frame. If you could get the shotgun frame on that, that would have been even better. Uh, what else we got? We got uh, planks stride. Reconstruction and tap the trigger. Meh. And then, of course, the fixed thoughts with reconstruction and incandescent. That looks nasty. So... 
congrats on getting the glitch <laughs> to work. Uh, some of my co-hosts still have not been able to do it. So there you go. And um, again, once again, we appreciate your feedback, even if Night Demon uh, always complains about it. So, yes, thank you so Night much. Demon Keep listening to the show. It. And for God's sake, next time on a long road trip, have us on loop on your Spotify. That way everybody gets to enjoy the amazing show we put forth every week. Excellent. Excellent. So are there so respawn, I'm sure you've watched no videos that, that you want to tell us about. Unless you have, in no. which case, go for it. Blue, yeah. have you watched anything besides Cheese's other video that you think is worthy of, of you know sharing with the lovely humans? Oh, it's I I have been consuming some, but I didn't really um, nothing, nothing that stands out and you're like, oh my god, this is the thing. Other than you know, our yeah, perpetual nothing... go 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 see Plum, go watch Plunder the Booty and he will tell you here's the dim link to use turn your brain off make this thing and just laugh while you slaughter things well yeah there there was there was that always always go to plunder the booty he's he's the man and he made the most boring build uh this time it's an arc titan who's got an armamentarian and unlimited grenades and barriers and so he doesn't really have much healing but he can stand behind a barrier and just peek around and throw grenades it's it's very effective and probably the most boring build I've ever done. But hold you, on, unlimited barriers and unlimited grenades, and you're calling it boring? Yeah, you just you're watching things die. You, you, and the you, little you're, the little you're straight a literal, traces. Destiny two is a little catapult turtle. All right, Yu-Gi-Oh made a card about <laughs> you. All right. <laughs> hey, look. Yeah, I mean, if I wanted to watch Twitch, I could. It's like I'm watching Twitch <laughs> with a controller on my head. I mean... It's, geez, it really works. It really, really yeah. works. <laughs> infinite, <laughs> infinite barrier, infinite grenade. Yeah, no, that would not be good for any content, right? No, you can use that forever. Is this the one he put up most recently? The, the best Dark Titan build I've, I've, if, I've ever yeah. seen so far? Yeah, that's the one. I'll add that to the show notes too. What grenade is it? The lightning don't... grenade? I don't it's think it matters. Pulse, pulses, because it's sending out traces, <laughs> and so you throw pulses at champions and high health targets, and it fires. It keeps sending traces and traces and traces. Jesus. Yeah, no, that's that's clearly boring. I don't know why anybody would ever play that. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. I'm, well, here, I have a question for you, Respawn. If you, yeah. if you don't die, how are you supposed to reload your weapons? That's what do you mean? My go-to way die. of reloading is dying. Oh, well, that's in PvP. If, you, if oh. you're doing that in PvE, we need to have a longer discussion. And I don't think you'd be on my, my, master, my master raid team or my master national team. Um, it turns out that I have not been invited, and now we know why. <laughs> Because I don't know. Over there in the corner, throwing grenades, hiding behind the wall, being like, "I'll, I'll be here. If you guys need me, you know where to find me." Yeah, if, if, if my teammates looking at the at looking at the revive counter, like that's how many times I can reload. <laughs> we have a problem. <laughs> Blue just in there going, saying, "Bring the enemies closer to the kill zone." Exactly. Tell me when to go to the next room. <laughs> like, guys, can we hurry up and kill a champion? I need to reload. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I can reload nine times, guys. What the no? It's not how that works, right? You, you, oh, you mean you don't treat that number as as the reload counter? I thought that's absolutely how the game worked. Absolutely not. No, we want that number to get as <laughs> high as it can and not to go down is the goal. Okay. Huh. Yeah. But are you sure? Yeah. So you you're uh -huh. an Xbox controller, right? So your reload button should be your X, <laughs> right? <laughs> Right. Holy smokes! I'm on, I'm on mouse and keyboard. You can absolutely unbind oh. your reload button. It has happened. No, yeah, okay. it, it's set to the teabag emote. The teabag emote. Okay, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for the twit. We. That's it for the twelve. Uh, that's it for us uh, finding eighty-one ways we're playing Destiny Two wrong. So there's yep. another way, and we'll see if that's included. So I, think I don't do think that's week. in there. I don't think anybody's ever considered that before. No. <laughs> I mean, ex expand your understanding of the game. If you haven't considered, you're not trying hard enough. Mellow Mally, 
what he's saying is bad bad advice don't listen to that okay <laughs> that is that is not good advice there, there's so I mean, many other ways to reload your weapon all right I mean, do, does it work though if it yeah. works don't knock it you know hey, hey, if you're a hunter you can even dodge to reload your weapon all right but just don't die to reload your weapon unless it's pvp but it reloads all three when you come back they're awful yeah no no i agree i mean it it's effective <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, illogical. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for hanging out with us this week. Um, again, we were down uh, one Titan, but we made up for it with another. So, uh, uh, Night Demon is definitely not the best host, Night Demon. Okay? And as far as where he goes, I don't know. I, I heard he was dressing out a clown at John Wayne Gacy's party or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah. The best host so, Night is playing laser tag. So, although, although to be fair, we we have still gone multi multi time zones across. Instead of going yeah. instead of going to the far east, we've gone all the way to the west coast for Mister Blue Screen. So, once again, we we have kept we have kept the time zone reach there. We tried to go further, but you know may, maybe in the future we'll see if we can get more continents involved. But we made sure at least to cover the entire country in in you know time zone math. Yeah, very but important. but but very but important that's secret bad part for of the blue show. because instead of being, no. you know, what is he five hours ahead of us? So instead of being uh, three o'clock in the afternoon for Demon, it is seven o'clock in the morning for Blue. So unless he is naturally a morning person, then my bad. No, I can yeah, I can wake up anytime and go to sleep anytime. I have a uh, very yeah. special skill set, like Liam yeah. Nelson, but different. You know. You're not the pilot, are you? I am not, no. I'm yeah. rapid oxidation suppression specialist. I can't even spell that. Um, not, okay. not our full know what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. No. To, to, oh, <laughs> are you a firefighter? I, I was, yeah. Oh, look at you. I didn't, re- I didn't put that together until you said not RF. I was like, huh, nice. That, that, that is a, the fanciest way of saying firefighter I've ever heard. Anyway, uh, Night Demon, if you could take us out. Not Night Demon. Night Demon, come on. Parody, if you could take us out. Night Demon. Night Demon could do it. Come on. Yeah. Well, he's he's in the chat, so he We're, should be here. He's going to edit this. We're counting. Like, I hope, please, Lord, I hope somebody edits this. <laughs> <laughs> I, he says he doesn't. He he runs through it to make sure there's no curse words and then just puts it out there the way it is. There, the, hey. there will be some amount of editing, and Respawn will never know what he actually says on the show. That's the best part. <laughs> Because I never. Well, well hold on one second there. A super high score, everybody, for the profanity this time. Check that out. That was good. <laughs> I didn't say anything, did I? <laughs> I know. I'm giving you a pat on the head. That was great. Oh, yeah. so I'm pretty consistent lately, unless I'm really upset. I've been pretty consistent with the oh, the, the, the the zero to five swear words per episode. Yeah, I'm not riding you. I'm thinking it's good. Okay. What episode yeah, yeah. is this? We didn't say how many episodes now. Two forty-five. That's awesome. That we've been around two hundred and forty-five. Yeah. We've Man, been, how is that possible? We're still not sponsored. How? How? How if is you're that listening, possible? Razor. Right. <laughs> I mean, look, we'll take Razor Black Rifle Coffee. Hell, I'll even take a Manscaped ad at this point. <laughs> No, but I I keep getting no we we are getting sponsorships in my email like I keep getting calls up from Raid Shadow Legends, uh, legitimately uh, uh, Raid Shadow Legends, uh, some Dragon RPG mobile game. Uh, so th- there are offers, but all the offers I have to get like freaking eighty people to also do the same thing. I'm like I'm not gonna reach out to our people and say, Yo, go download this game and play for us. <laughs> no. I'll sponsor like I, you know the coffee. I, or the, I would or love. The, the ball I would love. Or whatever, I don't respawn. I would love to on respawn to Twitch and be like, <laughs> "Come on, kids! Today we're going to play Raid Shadow Legends." <laughs> <laughs> now that that would bring people in. That I would watch. <laughs> what me playing Raid Shadow Legends or just doing it in that voice? Both. Both. Really, really playing anything <laughs> in that voice. Respawn as clown. That's what the people want. That's what the people crave. Respawns a clown every episode. What are you talking about? Yeah, but but come on now. See, see, every time can you give us a glimpse of the true clown within? Mm. I think I think he's just fighting to get out. Well, you know, I tried that once and I was Baker acted, so the clown stays locked away in his room. Yeah, yeah. That's once fair. they put me in the padded party room with the custom fitting jacket, that was the end of the clown. <laughs> that, that seems to be the best. Tailored for, for you, right, Taylor? Especially mm-hmm. for you, right? 
But man, when you get an itch, woo, it's not good. Uh, and, uh, and on that little reveal, uh, <laughs> of all the transitions I was going for, th- that's one you, you you're going to have patrons, and we appreciate you. <laughs> we appreciate you keeping keeping your clowns locked in the padded cell with with the fine fitting, well tailored jacket. Step orbit. You can't threaten them in with a good time. We've tried. The, the T-Rex King. The T-Rex King, I'm, I'm convinced, is just like standing over your shoulder perpetually watching you. Dude, he is here for every episode. He's what so you have to. consistent. He is just there. Just You know he's somewhere nearby leading the Otter Dance Troupe of, him, of course, himself, the leader, T-Rex King, the Scarlet KM, BHS Nightcrawler, Mel O'Malley, and Dedicated Wham. I, th- I think the T-Rex King and Mel O'Malley are in, are in League. I'm not sure in League to do what, but there's some sort of synergy, some sort of plan there. I don't... They're not to be trusted. He's not even because... here because he likes to show. He's here because he's the Titan and he specifically screws with me. That's why he's here. I'm his yeah. source of entertainment, but not for Destiny News. We were told there'd be crayons. Listen, <laughs> I have little birdies everywhere. Just just to poke you to get you all riled up properly for the show. It's, just... <laughs> it's, an, important, it's an important network we've built, but we do good work with it. You know who also does good work? Carter 2782, Golden God 1562, Basically, Salt, Zombie Pops, and Renard Callant, who are throwing all the grenades. And we will get you all the answers from Deacon as she trains her raid, day one raid team of Dimwe, Gravy Jeff, PP Pipe, and the Drifter Driftwood. Thank you to all of you lovely human beings who are watching Respawn from afar with the binoculars, making sure he's staying on course, making sure he's showing up each week. And thank you for listening to us for all of the destiny and tangents the show brings to you we appreciate you each and every week and we will do this uh relentlessly endlessly until the end of time yeah and this where i destiny. say respawn thank you for joining us blue screen 42 thank you, thank you for joining us thank you. night demon thank you via the magic of editing for joining us this week thank you, thank your, you. Titan, your titans are parody and night demon your hunter is no one respond to real life And that one friend you can count on to always say, let's do the hard thing, and then laugh with you through failing through it a thousand times (laughs) is Blue Screen 42. If you have feedback for the show, we implore you, please email us, two titans and a hunter at hotmail.com. We are also on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere is two titans and a hunter. You can find this show wherever you get your podcasts. You should follow us on YouTube for each new episode, each weekly update video, and all of the live streams. If you want to know what Shade of One's got for you, you want to know what's in the Eververse this week, you want to say, hey, I'm waiting for the week of double whatever rewards or XP. We've got you covered. YouTube, Two Titans and a Hunter. Two Titans and a Hunter.com for this show and all of the times we say that'll be in the show notes. That's in the show notes. We'll put that link in the show notes. Two Titans and a Hunter.com is where to find all that. And if you would like to join the glorious otter dance troupe to study under the tutelage of the T-Rex King, if you would like to be threatened with a good time and Zep Orbit will teach you the way, if you would like to throw all the all the grenades, as only our finest grenade throwers can, patreon.com slash TTH. If you just want to toss some shekels in our direction, coffee.com slash two times and a hunter. And if you want the thrill of live action, spicy language, and poking respawn live each and every Saturday morning, twitch.tv slash no one responds in real life. And if you want to keep it family friendly like a proper British gentleman, twitch.tv slash two times and a hunter. Go there, press the button, hit the bell, and you will know in which time zone, in which times, they're going live. And uh, that's it. That's all we've got. We have destiny all the destiny. We have news all the news, and we have gone on all the best tangents we could find to go on. Destiny 2 Podcast. So, Blue, thank you for hanging out with us this week. Thank you for having me. It's been fun hanging out with you guys. Uh, Everybody out there, if you see me playing, you're free to join just to turn in your bounties, or we could have a good time. And I will be listening next week. Yep. And um, for, for, for those of you, especially you, that don't realize... Having a person that is willing to put themselves through hell repeatedly to do an activity that they keep failing is a valuable commodity. Mm-hmm. Most people would give up, but him, no, he's he's determined to bang his head against that wall. So if you really want somebody that's going to stick through it, no matter what, blues your guy.
Absolutely. He's the man who will say, let's go do the hard thing. It's going to be stupid, and we're going to get there eventually. Oh. And we will. Even Respawn has a limit. <laughs> I'm going to find... Up. Done! <laughs> now the weekly... Right. Later, Jess. I... Later, Patreons. Bring... Later, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being here, Blue. Thanks for keeping the train on track, Parody. But I'm out! Deuces! Deuces! You stay out of this, wife. Stay out of it. Just... <laughs>